Welcome to college football prime time inside the glass bowl in Toledo. It's a match and matchup. Number 16, Illinois, in the BCS, number 16, comes to Toledo to take on a Rocket team that's looking for some revenge. And here come the Rockets right now. five in a row and this has made the Mac West an exciting race. It's very simple for the Huskies. If they win tonight, NIU, they win the West, they go on to the Mac Championship game. If Toledo gets the win tonight, they control their own destiny. If they win out, they'll be Mac champions. Hello again, everybody, along with Desmond Howard and Quint Kesnick. We'll hear from him in a moment. I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you for joining us for Wednesday night action. Yes, you sir. know, Toledo is a very good football team. They had a tough schedule at the beginning. They took on two SEC teams exactly. to start things out. You cannot undersell this Toledo team. You do so at your own risk. No, you really, you're right about that. And you said they're on a five-game winning streak. And during those five games, they've averaged 45 points per contest. Their quarterback, Terrence Owens, he's playing at a high level right now, getting the ball into the hands of their wide out, who should be playing on Sundays, Bernard Reedy. They have three running backs they can throw at you at any time, just in case their star running back, David Fluellen, doesn't play. Now, it's senior night. He's a senior. He's been big, uh, danged up a little bit. But I think he's going to go tonight, Dave. He's dressed. He's ready to go. His mom and dad are here. His whole family is here. And as you can hear by the booing, so are the Huskies. There go the Huskies. <laughs> Now, here's what's at stake for Northern Illinois. We talked about the Mac West, but look what else. They're undefeated. They're 16th in the BCS. They're on a road win streak that's the longest in FBS, and they've won 23 straight in conference play. This is a good football team, obviously, and the guy behind it all. And you can never talk about him enough. And you've seen him now in person, Jordan Lynch. Yeah, I saw him live and in person last week. Against Ball State, and this kid was as good as advertised, completing 81% of his passes for 345 yards and two touchdowns. And right there, a big play on third down in the game. He got a first down, ran the ball 20 times for 123 yards and two more scores. There's no doubt about it, Dave. He's the heart and soul of this offense and of the Northern Illinois team. So this kid, I can't wait to watch him again tonight against Toledo. And you saw the numbers. At Ball, at Ball State's a very good football team, but Jordan Lynch, and we're going to show you some of the highlights throughout the evening of his performance against Ball State that kept Northern Illinois unbeaten. If you only saw the final score of that game, well, you were very much misled because that game would have got out of hand in the last 60 seconds. We have some more news, though, on the injury front. Quinn will tell you about who's in and who's out for tonight's game. Has your phone turned you in? Ah, ah. The few, the proud, ah. the Marines. Well, it's a chilly evening in Toledo. We're upstairs. The booth is kind of cold. On the field, not too warm as Quinn Kessling, but Quinn, you've got some big news about tonight's game. Toledo head coach Matt Campbell as excited and fired up as you will ever see. He gave us two keys to victory. One, don't buy the Husky hype. Two, you got to tackle Jordan Lynch. You got to bounce him east-west. Now, the significant injury for Northern Illinois, wide receiver Tommy Lee Lewis will not play. He's out with a foot injury. He's their number one receiver. 74 catches this year. Number two in all-purpose yards. He returned punts. He returns kickoffs in this game two years ago. He took two back for touchdowns. That is a significant loss for the Huskies, Dave. And Desmond, how does to, uh, Northern Illinois make up for that? Well, I think they're going to have to play two guys who they're not used to playing, number 14, Argueros Turner and Angelo Sebastiano, number 85. Um, you got to see, it's, those are some huge shoes to try to fill, though, because they love getting the ball in Lewis's hands. He's a guy they use, they use to move him around a lot, fly sweeps, motions. He's a guy who defensive coordinator say he requires extra attention. That may mean more Jordan Lynch. He didn't run very much in that game last week that you were at. And then in the second half, he did. The first half, he was kind of quiet. Yes. First half, he did not have any design runs. The second half, the offensive coordinator, Bob Cole, decided to put the ball in his hands, and he took over. And that's going to be a touchback. And so Toledo, and by the way, we'll explain those pink and blue uniforms here in just a moment. There's a serious significance to that. But it does not take us through our impact players. Well, Kareem Hunt, he's been playing very well. Freshman running back, he's averaged over 140 yards in the last four games. Then Bernard Reedy, he's the wide out, number one outside. He's a playmaker. They're going to try to get the ball in his hands. And defensively, Jimmy Ward, the best defensive back in the MAC, and Joe Windsor. He had a pick six for a touchdown against Ball State last week. Watch for him as a defensive end on the edge is trying to rush the quarterback. And there is David Fluellen, a tailback, number 22. 
was injured on the 26th early in the Bowling Green game, did not play the last two. Owens, shoulder fake, gets away and lost the football at the 20 yard line. And it is Northern Illinois ball. Toledo had only given up four sacks, lowest in the nation, and George Rainey has recovered this number 46 in white. Covered by Northern Illinois, first down. Well, Terrence, he has to protect the ball, especially when there are bodies around him. Like you said, they've only given up four sacks so far this season, so he's not used to having guys around him in his personal space like that. But when they are around, he needs to put two hands on the ball and protect the ball. Not the way you want to start out against Northern Illinois. And you see Northern Illinois, that plus column. That is part of a winning football formula that has worked so well for them. So now Jordan Lynch will take over in great field position and he's running on the first play downhill picks up five it'll be second down and five unlike by smith unlike last week the first play of the game a design run for jordan lynch especially right down here in the red zone they figure let's not mess around let's try to get points on the board quick he is a tough runner one of the things coaches have talked about is the way he likes to run when he's going straight on how tough he is he's a north and south runner i, I think he's the the max version of Tim Tebow. Looking to the end zone, he'll take off. Got pressure from behind, and he's brought down. Back in the 20-yard line by J. Ron Elliott. The senior from Cleveland. 11 and a half tackles for a loss now. J. Ron Elliott is a young man who I think we'll be talking about him all night. We'll be calling his name on a lot of tackles. He's a guy who's very athletic. They like to put his hand in the dirt and let him rush the passer because he's fast. You see how he just ran down Jordan Lynch from behind right there? But he can also play standing up and play in space very well, too. So watch out for number 15, Jerome Elliott. Well, a big break for Toledo if they can force Northern Illinois into a field goal attempt. Third down and eight. James Spencer, 34, now in the backfield. He gets it. Get to the edge. Get to the five and gets to the end zone. That's Northern Illinois. They don't waste time. They score quickly. Right after I made the remark, it'd be nice if Toledo could hold them. They go to Spencer on third and eight, Desmond. That's what was so impressive. And the thing about Spencer, Spencer's a walk-on, too. This kid has earned the respect of not only his teammates, but his coaches. They say, listen, he's been practicing so hard, we have to give him a try. He played a lot last week against Ball State, and he opens up this first series with a touchdown run. With his second rushing touchdown of the season. So three plays and 21 yards, and Northern Illinois will have seven points off turnover. And we haven't even played 90 seconds yet. Toledo's first play was a strip sack and a disaster. So you basically just handed the Huskies seven points coming off the bus. Spencer for 18 and Toledo in trouble early. Last year, the U.S. James Spencer, number 34 right there, picks up the 18-yard touchdown on a play that's very simple on the drawing board. And Desmond, this worked exactly the way the Huskies drew it up. You're exactly right about that. All he had to do was option off the right defensive end, uh, Christian Smith. And uh, it, was, it was an easy read. He, he went down, he pitched it to Spencer, practically walked into the end zone. Great play. And you know, what happens is Jordan Lynch requires so much extra attention, though, that guys are just keyed in on Lynch. Anytime he's approaching the line of scrimmage, he's going to attract defensive backs, defensive ends, linebackers. So it makes it easy for a guy for Spence to have the whole outside to himself. So how can Toledo recover? The good news is there's so much football left to be played. Another deep kick and another touchback. Here's Christian Smith right here. He's just going to option off him. When he comes down, he's going to pitch it out there to Spencer. Easy touchdown around the corner. Here's Smith. Pitch it to Spencer. No one's going to catch him out there. Just like you tried up, Dave. There was nobody else there, too. No one out there. I guess you're right. All eyes are on Lynch. Yes, sir. So Terrence Owens, there he is, first chance to get a good look at him. The last time we saw him, he was falling on a fumble that he couldn't recover on his first snap. And he'll go on the ground in a good hole this time for Fluellen. They have a first down. Looks like he got 10. 
to see if they move the change. Ken Bishop on the stop. You know, it's good to see Fluella in the backfield. He's a guy who's a team leader, uh, an amazing running back, great receiver on the backfield, too. It's just good to see him healthy and back there playing the game. Just shy of the first down. They'll go back to Fluella, and he'll easily get the first down to the 38-yard line. Bishop, number 93, in white there again. Now, let's take a moment to explain those uniforms. Those are not traditional Toledo uniforms, but they're auctioning off 100 of these power of pink shirts that all the players are wearing in this football game tonight. So this will be an online auction uh, in conjunction with Under Armour, of course, to uh, so show support for breast cancer research and awareness. Mullick in motion. Back to Fluellen. Hunting, and he'll only get to right at 41. He picked up an extra yard on the spin. There's Jimmy Ward up from his strong safety position, one of Desmond's impact players on the stop. Yeah, Jimmy Ward is the best defensive back in the conference. You speak to co offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators. They're all just amazed at what he can do. He's a great tackler, excellent in coverage in the nickel package. He's going to come down and cover the slot receiver. He's a guy who will probably be playing on Sunday's day. Second and seven. He's a senior from Mobile, Alabama. He'll be maybe at 300 career tackles by the end of the night through Ellen. And there you see why he's easily one of the nation's best running backs when he's healthy. He gets to the 46. A couple of yards to go. Bishop again on the stop from his defensive tackle position. Third and call it about two. Quick tempo for the Rockets. And then they slow it down. First time we've seen an empty backfield set for Tilly. And they go with the jet sweep of Fluella, and he'll be short of the first down. You see Boomer Mays, 45, and Anthony Wells, number 91, for the Huskies, stopping him a yard short. Fourth and one. Is it too early to go for it? Crucial decision, crucial decision, especially down 7-0 already early in the first quarter. I think I would punt. I think I would punt it away. That's exactly what Matt Campbell has decided to do. Vince Penza, senior punter from Canfield, Ohio, on his way out there. And with Tommy Lee Lewis out of the game, Matt Williams left to be the punt return duties. High kick. This was ripped. And Williams can't hang on to it, and he's hit as soon as he picked it up at the seven-yard line. That's a 44-yard kick, an excellent punt by Penza. The 20th time he's gone inside the 20-yard line. So much to be said about Jordan Lynch. You see what he's done as a starter. He's only lost twice, and that's outside his conference. The only player last year in FBS who had over 1,500 rushing yards and 3,000 passing yards. Tebow-like versatility, in your words, Desmond. He's also among a very select group of just nine players in the sport's history with 5,000 pass yards and 3,000 rush yards. Not sure if he intended that fake or not, but he's going to get three to the 10-yard line. We saw Trayvon Hester, the nose tackle, and Chase Murdoch, number 40, a good linebacker. There he is, big Trayvon on the stop. Yeah, Lynch looked quite indecisive on that play. Looked like he was trying to fake it, was going to run, and then didn't like what he saw down the field, decided to run with the ball. So normally he makes quicker decisions with the ball in his hand. I'm kind of surprised he was so hesitant right there on that play. Des, would you spy him if you were Toledo? Definitely spy him, now, you know, because he's such a, a force in the running game. And that is a pretty good pass intended for Deron Brown. It's going to be incomplete. Third down and seven coming up. Cheatham Norrells, the best cover corner, say the Toledo coaches. They're right there, number 11. He is. He never turns around. Cheatham Norrells has great cover skills. He's a guy who's usually aware and alert of the ball being up in the air. Had he turned around, that may have been a pick six for Toledo. Tackler for this Toledo team, and it's fourth down in Northern Illinois. will have to punt. And it's 
That was why it was a great decision for Toledo to punt that ball. It's a field position game right now. They rushed for, and what they like to do is make sure that Jordan Lynch escapes at least through the middle and try to run parallel. If he's running parallel, it's easier to tackle. Once he squares his shoulders and goes north to south, this guy's a fool. Tyler Weedle, both these teams have excellent kicking games, by the way. Again, part of a winning formula of football. He backs up Bernard Reedy to the 38-yard line for a fair catch. But still, the Rockets get excellent field position out of that. Their defense needed that stop after the sudden change on the first play of the game led to an NIU touchdown. ESPN College Football Prime. Brought to you by... Walmart, save money, live better. And Infinity, luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. And a senior night here at the University of Toledo. A lot of stake for the Rocket seniors, really all of the Rocket Nation. Toledo seniors, most of them have not ever defeated that man or any of the Northern Illinois quarterbacks. Lost in 2010 by 35. Crazy game here two years ago, 63-60. And, and DeKalb last year lost 31-24. Now getting our first look at number three, Kareem Hunt. True freshman who has been outstanding at running back. He's standing next to the quarterback Owens and gets the ball. Bouncing off a couple of tackles and he'll gain a very hard earned five yards out to the 43 44 yard line. In his last four games, Hunt has had 127, 114, 168, and last week versus Buffalo, he ran for 186. Yeah, he's an impressive young man. He's been averaging 6.8 yards per carry, and he's a home run hitter. Once he gets out there on the edges, he's gone. Has a little bit of a hole here, runs into contact, has a first down, it appears, just about a half a foot shy of midfield. Well, it's an interesting luxury for Toledo with Flewellen in and out of the lineup. They had to get Hunt and another young back named Damian Jones Moore. Those guys had to play. Yeah, they really and they responded well though too. They really, they really did. And Hunt was a guy who they didn't really know what they were going to get out of him because he was injured during camps. So they you know, hadn't seen a lot of Hunt, but I'm telling you, this kid averaged 149 yards and four starts so far and uh, you see now he's in for Flewellen already in the first quarter so this guy is a guy who they respect off uh, the offensive of coaches respect a lot and you see him coming out David Flewellen number 22 checking back in on second down and six into NIU territory Owens, play action, under pressure, right in the middle of the field, knocked away. It might have been intercepted by Jimmy Ward. Did he hang on to that? The officials say he did. Incredible play by Jimmy Ward. Excellent ball skills. That's why he's the best defensive back in the MAC. Watch right here. He goes under the wide receiver, hits the ball up, keeps his eye on the ball, and snatches it with his left hand. I mean, that's just a play that everybody can't make that play, Dave. Incredible play by Jimmy Ward. I'm delighted to offer up hashtag SC Top 10 for that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was awesome. That's why he's an impact player, Jimmy Ward. 10th career interception. There are some NFL people here today, and he just picked up a couple of slots in the draft on that one. He may have earned himself a few bucks. Meantime, that's two turnovers here. And we haven't even halfway through the first quarter yet. We'll see how the Huskies respond to give it to Big Cameron Stingley. And he is the pounding of the two backs. You saw the speed of Spencer. Stingley, not subtle. And he picked up five there. It'll be second down and five. Stingley is a guy who they normally use later in the game, you know, to try to move the pile and wear a team out. Surprises him in, in this game so early. And they go to the jet sweep to Angelo Sebastiano who has not caught a pass since the Iowa game at the beginning of the season. He's been little used. He picks up three there, third and two, but with Tommy Lee Lewis out, yeah. Sebastiano is one of a couple of players who are going to have to step up. You're right about that. They're going to have to use a couple of guys just to replace the five foot seven inch Tommy Lee Lewis, who is so important to this offense and everything that he could do. 43% third down conversions. The Huskies coming into this game. Sebastiano in motion again. They fake it to him. Lynch keeps. And Lynch spins and has the first down. That little spin right of the marker assured that Northern Illinois would keep this drive alive. Lynch is a tailback playing the quarterback position. He does the little things that tailbacks do. Watch him spin right here. You can't get square hits on him. He'll give your shoulder, then spin. 
excellent run by Jordan Lynch just to get the first down. And he's a guy who he's not afraid of contact. As a matter of fact, he told me he doesn't mind initiating contact at times, too. Yeah, that's something else that came out when you talked to the folks at Toledo about that, and they really respect Lynch for that. Lynch will look this time on the slant, has his man to the 40. It's going to be a first down and more. Breskison inside Toledo territory all the way down to the 38 for a 29-yard pickup before Chase Murdoch dragged him down. They caught him in the corner blitz, and uh, they were on the same play page. Lynch and Breskison right there at the top. You see the corner came, number 11. Easy read for the wide out quarterback. The safety didn't get over the top quick enough to pick up Breskison. And Lynch with the fake. Hole opens up. Lynch will find that. And he'll get 11 and a first down, maybe even 12, to the 26-yard line before Christian Smith and Junior Silvestri bring him down. And Northern Illinois going at a quick pace. At this point, Dave, they're trying to wear out this Toledo defense, especially their front seven. It's a different formation now with three receivers at the top of your screen. Now one in motion. A lot of faking, but it all comes down to Lynch, and he took a shot in the backfield that time by Murdoch, number 40. He should pound his chest after that one. That'll be second down, and no gain on the play. Ten to go. He did take a big shot right here. You know, that was something that coaches, they talked about, because Lynch didn't really run the ball. No design runs a week ago against Ball State. They thought he may have been sort of banged up. I asked him, I said, how do you feel? He said 100%. I said, listen, your coach told me, Coach Carey said, there's no player out there who's 100% at this point in the game, this point of the season, I mean. So Lynch said, well, you know, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Ruskison makes the catch at the 21-yard line. That is all he's going to get. That'll be about a five-yard pickup. Third down and five coming up. Cameron Cole on the stop as Desmond takes us through our second set of impact players. Sharon Brown, number four, the wide receiver for NIU. He's the guy who can take the top off of a defense. He's a sprinter. And then Cameron Stingley, we've seen him carry the ball already. He's a big low, takes three or four guys to bring him down. And Jerome Elliott, we already saw him earlier, tackled Jordan list from behind he's an impact player watch for number 15 tonight he's going to be a guy whose name we're going to call a lot tonight during this ball game a lot of movement lynch dumps it off to sebastiano he's got room inside the 10 and he'll be knocked out of bounds at around the seven yard line first and 10 for the huskies Chaz whitaker on the stop so sebastiano who again had not caught a pass in the game in almost three months making an impact early they're using him the same way they use Tommy Lee Lewis. You know, some really short, high percentage passes. Them get the ball in his hands, just start to run with it out in space. He's obviously a guy who they have a lot of confidence with, with the ball in his hands in space, and he's doing so very good so far. You can see what Northern Illinois has done in the red zone, including tonight's possession. Off the fumble on the first play of the game by Toledo's Owens. Lynch, this is where he gets a lot of his touchdowns inside the 10 on direct running plays. He'll get it to the five. Smith and Hester team up on the stop. And that's one of for Northern Illinois, one of their red zone tendencies. If they go empty, they love to run Lynch up the middle, sometimes off the edge. But anytime he's in an empty formation, look for Jordan Lynch in the red zone to run the ball. Rod Carey in his first full season at Northern Illinois. Stingley now is in the backfield number 42. As Breskis in the clear through the backfield. Lynch will throw the fade open and overthrew Sebastiano. It'll be third down and goal. That's a throw that Lynch wish he had back because he was wide open. Sebastiano was wide open. Oh, man, he overthrew him bad, too. Even the mascot in Northern <laughs> Illinois saw that. He had his hands up for touchdown, but it didn't happen. Yeah, it was an easy fade route. He had one on one coverage. Just didn't hit the wide out. The 11th play of the drive right here. Stingley in the block. Lynch will fire to the end zone. He pretty much threw that one away. He threw that about as hard as you can throw it. Looked like he was trying to get it to Juwan Breskison, but couldn't do it. So Matt Campbell's defense holds after a long drive. And so with 4.20 to go, out will come... Matthew Sims is 13 of 17. That's the holder of the punter, Tyler Weedle. 
Both these teams, excellent kickers, by the way. It's, yeah. it, again, I talked about it at the top. It's a hallmark of a good program if you can button up things on special teams as well as offense and defense. This will be from 23. Not much, if any, breeze this evening. Well, there's a jinx if ever there was one. That one never made it. Toledo celebrates. The worn cap of Matt Campbell. It might be as old as he is. As Toledo celebrates, Northern Illinois has had two turnovers go their way, but they've only been able to score on one of them. This one, wide left. College football Saturday. Only the best of the best are featured in the top ten. It's a pretty exclusive club. Jordan with the check. Anything else you want back here? Well, Thursday night on ESPN, Blake Bortles and the number 18 Knights need to keep winning to stay atop the American and remain in the BCS picture. They face Gary Nova and a Scarlet Knights team a win away from bowl eligibility. College football primetime served by Applebee's. Rutgers versus Central Florida Thursday at 7.30 on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. With Desmond Howard and Quinn Kesnick, I'm Dave Lamont welcoming you to ESPN College Football Primetime. There is your score and time. The first miss inside the 40 for Matthew Sims, he'd been 10 for 10 from 40 and in. And that's why it is still only 7-0. Toledo has turned it over twice. And they go back to the ground game, and Kareem Hunt will pick up six, second and four is next. It seems like Toledo on offense, they're winning at the line of scrimmage. They're really pushing NIU's defensive line back. Watch this, watch the, the push they get up front. And good vision that time by Hunt. And he is right at the marker. We'll see if they rule it a first down or not. Right on the 30-yard line. And it is indeed a first down. When you look at that in the middle of that line, Jeff Myers, 54, is a junior. Zach Karen has an NFL future, number 67, the center. And Greg Mance made his 37th straight start tonight, number 75, the other guard. This time some sturdy resistance from Boomer Mays in the Huskies' defense. Gain of two, second and eight next. I expect the defensive coordinator, Jay Neiman, to start dropping some guys in the box. The Mets start putting seven, eight in the box to try to stop this run. Because right now, Toledo's offensive line, I think that they're winning at the point of attack. No one's getting the signals from the sidelines. You can see right there. One of those signalers is a dummy, so to speak. Nothing personal. And the other is signaling out the real play. Owens looked left, spins and throws right. Catch by Alonzo Russell. He'll gain seven. And Russell to the 39 will be a little short of the first down. It'll be third and one. Great block by Greg Mance right there. That play. He pulled out and he flattened, I think, number seven, Santa Catarina. Knocked him down. When you got these big guys coming out there on the edges, that's what Toledo likes. They like to put guards and even the center to pull and then cream some of those outside linebackers of strong safeties. <laughs> Hunt at the top of your screen. They went to a wildcat formation. They motioned Owens out to the wide receiver position. Direct snap to Hunt. Yeah, they took Owens out. I yeah. got the numbers mixed Owens. up. It was Owens who left the backfield and Hunt who gains the first down. That's different. Yeah. I mean, at this point, Jason Cannell, the offensive coordinator for Toledo, he must be satisfied with the job his guys are doing up front. They're really controlling the line of scrimmage. Owens. Got a man, he's deep and he's open and the catch is made by Alonzo Russell. Inside the 30, he's gonna be marked out of the 26 yard line. This is a sophomore from Washington, D.C. with a very bright future. Alonzo Russell, 6'4", 190 pounds, like you said, Dave, a guy with a bright future. They think the ceiling is really high. They're just waiting for him to reach his potential. Owens, Hunt underneath. He'll get to the 22, maybe the 21-yard line, a gain of four, second and six. Michael Santa Catarina on the stop 
for yeah. Northern Illinois. Yeah, Russell right there is a guy who they think could be a game changer. He's a game breaker. Bernard Reedy is their go-to guy right now, but Russell's young. He's still picking up the offense, but they really love his potential. They think his upside is tremendous. Haven't seen much of Bernard Reedy yet. His Owens on the zone read keeps it. Gets inside the 20 to the 19. Joe Windsor brings him down there. Reedy, number one, one of your impact players, but I haven't really talked about him yet. Yeah, he's getting extra attention. Uh, you know, NIU there, they're rolling, rolling the coverage his way. You know, but there's a, there's a lot of football left to be played. I think Reedy's going to get. They're taking right now what the defense gives them. And like I said, the offensive line they're dominating, so they're running the ball a lot. And when they do take their shots, you know, they take it to the open, the open receiver. Owens. Nobody's open right now. He's got room to get to the edge to get a first down. Instead, he throws it away. The official dropped his cap to indicate that the receiver was already out of bounds anyway. Great coverage down the field by Northern Illinois. It's like they saw this play on the film and every guy was matched up to his man. There was nowhere for Owens to go with Owens to go with the ball, so he had to throw out of bounds. Now, like you said though, Dave. He probably could at least try to run to get the first down. I don't know. Maybe he felt as though he couldn't make it, but it looked from up here that he had a shot. I agree. I'm a little surprised, but then again, I'm not the one who's going to have somebody chasing me trying to hurt me. Jeremiah Detmer's made 11 in a row. Talking about one of the best kickers in the nation right here. Only missed one this year. From 36, he's perfect. And Toledo is on the board with 51 seconds to go in this opening quarter. Jeremiah Dittmer is going to be another guy you'll see on Sundays. Yeah. Without question. You don't find too many kickers in any form of any level of football with that kind of accuracy record. Now, 18 of 19 on the year, and he hasn't missed a PAT either. I love it when you see these kickers wear numbers like 99 <laughs> and 85. I just love that. <laughs> it shows their personality, you know. <laughs> so when your alma mater hands out great all-time numbers like they did with Devin Gardner this year, they're not going to hand one out to a kicker? Is that what you're trying to say? Um, Very unlikely. <laughs> Highly unlikely. <laughs> Would you be offended if a kicker wore your number? <laughs> he better be a heck of a kicker, boy. I tell you that. <laughs> It'd be something special. <laughs> I also question, we showed some shirtless young men there. I guess you can do that when you're in your late teens and early 20s, come to a cold football game. And temperatures hovering around high 30s. Yeah. I mean, it's actually, it was a beautiful day around here. We were ready to tee this thing up at noon today. We were fired up for this game. Paris Logan is back deep. A lovely day. Lovely day. Again, this is an area where the loss of Tommy Lee Lewis that Quinn told us about before kickoff may impact Northern Illinois. We'll get a good look at it right here with Logan. Gets a couple of good blocks, and he is going to be dragged down at the 28-yard line. Well, Wells Fargo brings us inside access into Toledo Athletics. We take a look at the upcoming renovation and expansion of the Rockets Larimer Athletic Center. That's the drawing, obviously. Toledo's football building here in the Glass Bowl in the north end zone. Starting in January, they will redesign the interior, expand the weight room, the coaches' offices, and the team's meeting rooms, and completely renovate the locker rooms. And there's the building as it stands there. And a hardcore old-fashioned weight room, I might add. We'll tell you about that in just a second. As Stingley is tripped up, gets only one. It'll be second down and nine. Orion Jones on the stop. We do want to give a quick thanks to the Toledo strength staff for allowing us in that weight room today for the three of us to get a workout in. Had a good time in there. Some old-fashioned weights in there, too. Stingley on the catch. He was out in the flat. And he drags a tackler down to the 37-yard line. Third and one is next. We go to Quint on the field. Dave, right now, Northern Illinois operating without their two receivers. We mentioned the loss of Tommy Lee Lewis, not playing today with the foot. But Deron Brown right now is in front of the heater. He spent a ton of time on the bike uh, nursing a hamstring injury. Uh, he has big catches this year, 41 catches. Tommy Lee Lewis has 74. So this, this is a, uh, a big uphill battle for the receivers of Northern Illinois. 
So they have one quarter down, Quint. They took advantage of a fumble on the first play of the game by Toledo on a 21-yard touchdown drive. They missed the field goal after another Toledo mistake, and the Rockets are right with them. Number 16 in the BCS trying to remain unbeaten and stay in the hunt for maybe another BCS Bowl. Northern Illinois having a tough time with the Rockets of Toledo. That was the first play led to the Stevens touchdown, the Spencer touchdown. But Toledo has come back despite that acrobatic interception by a future pro. Honestly, I'm a little old-fashioned. I love chalk and erasers, but change is coming. All my students have the brand new Surface. It has the new windows and comes with Office as a real keyboard so they can do... Re reported by CBSSports.com. The Tigers have agreed to trade first baseman Prince Fielder to the Texas Rangers for Ian Kinsler. Possibility that another player is involved as well as some cash given Fielder's whopping $214 million contract. Jason Stark is coming up on SportsCenter shortly over on ESPN News to discuss the deal. Dave? I guess this means that Cabrera goes to first base, which the Tigers kind of need anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not the quickest in the world at third base. With 7-3 right. as we start the second quarter, Dr. Pepper wrote to the conference championship, and in this case, the Mac West. If Northern Illinois wins, they have wrapped up the West, even though they have one more game to play. There's Lynch on the carry, tripped up by Murdoch, and that'll be a first down for Northern Illinois. It seems as though with the two starting receivers out, Deron Brown and Tommy Lee Lewis for Northern Illinois, they started, they decided to put the ball in Jordan Lynch's hands because last week against Ball State, there weren't this many design runs, if any, in the first half. And now he's run the ball a lot this first quarter, and now it's starting off the second quarter. There he goes, a Turner, Argo say Turner, I should say. Down to the 46, picks up five, second down and five. Argueros Turner. Lynch will keep it to midfield, and that is going to be it. He was met and stood up by Murdoch and by Cheatham Norrells and pushed back short of the first down. He'll have a full yard to go to get it, keep this drive alive. They pulled the left guard, Jared Volk, right here to run a power game. Too many Northern, too many Toledo defenders over there. Big hit. This is exactly what they want to do to the coordinator. Coach Took told us we want to get physical with Northern Illinois. We want to hit Jordan Lynch. We want to hit those skill position players and see how they react. That's a lateral to Stingley. He breaks one tackle but does not get the first down. J. Rohn Elliott, number 15, led the parade of Toledo defenders that time. It was an interesting play call. They needed just the one yard. They went backwards to try to get it. Especially a pass out there to Stingley. Stingley's a guy, he's an excellent downhill runner. Downhill is his game, but anytime you can get him going east and west, you can bring him down very easily. So Bernard Reedy stands at the 15-yard line. Weedle. Not as high a kick, but Reedy, surrounded by Huskies, makes the fair catch at the 15-yard line. So Toledo, shaky start for them on offense. They've turned the ball over twice, but they are in this game. Every generation has their lease. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. So Northern Illinois trying to clinch the MAC West, taking on Toledo tonight, wearing special uniforms that will be auctioned off, and not a smooth start, Des, for this Toledo team. Not at all. Look, Terrence Owens right there got the ball stripped. Northern Illinois, they got the ball back, and they're right. Excellent play by Jimmy Ward. Great awareness after the tip to reach out there and snag it with his left hand. But now, you know, it's still just 7 to 3, Dave. Well, you got to give Toledo's defense some credit, and also we have to be, you know, the Huskies are missing two key playmakers now. Brown out of the game. Tommy Lee Lewis not even dressed in uniform tonight. Going to be a lot of Jordan Lynch, perhaps. Meantime, David Flewellen back in the lineup, back into the game for Toledo. He gets the carry, and he is smothered back at the 11-yard line by Santa Catarina. Loss of four, three. It'll be second down and 13. Santa Catarina read that play all the way. He moved inside and then shot the gap right up the middle for a tackle for a loss. Excellent play by Santa Catarina. 
It seems like whenever Toledo makes a check, Northern Illinois is making a check on defense, too. It's uh, quite the chess game going on right now. Owens, the lefty fires, caught outside the 20 to the 22-year line. There's Alonzo Russell again. You don't see a lot of 6'4 receivers in the map. No, you really don't. You, that's different, and his story is a little bit different, too. He redshirted in 2011, but did not even get to practice with this team. He redshirted and cleaned up in dorms. He worked as a dorm assistant for a while, didn't practice with the team, didn't do anything with him, and has made an impact the last two seasons. Third and four. The Huskies show blitz. Owens check at the line. Seemed to be some confusion for Toledo's offense right there. And it's Northern Illinois that takes one of their three first half timeouts. So lots of thinking going on out there. And Northern Illinois has thought we're better off taking a timeout. Dude, I'm like twice. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by the ultra-intuitive M-Series Smart TV from Vizio. It's beautifully simple. Senior night in Toledo. The Huskies trying to remain unbeaten. One of six in FBS. And there's your score in time. With Quint Kesnick and Desmond Howard. I'm Dave Lamont. Wednesday night, Maction. And if Northern Illinois wins the game, they clinch a berth in the MAC championship game at Ford Field. Third and three for the Rockets. That's Flewellen checked out of the backfield at the bottom of your screen of the 20-yard line. Owens throws, has a man, and right at the marker. That will be a first down. Catch made by Dwight Macon, a junior from Steubenville, Ohio. They went to a bunch formation to the field. Confused the Huskies secondary for an easy pitching catch for, two, for the Rockets. Back on the ground, Flewellen, patient runner, made one man miss, but could not get away from Jamal Bass, the leading tackler, number six in the white and red. So a gain of three, second down and seven coming up. Bass, a redshirt junior from Miramar, Florida, near the in between Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Both these teams, like so many others, drawing from South Florida for a talent pool. Owens dumps it off. Llewellyn's got good hands and has some room. First down outside the 35, just shy of the 40-yard line. Brought down by Boomer Mays, but that's another first down for the Rockets. Excellent block down the field again by Greg Mance. Watch him pull out that number 75. Throws his body, grows, rolls. Big guy getting down the field, leading the way for the running back. You gotta love that. They got some pretty good guys on the offensive line for Toledo, too. A lot of experience up front, especially from that guard to guard area. You're talking about Jeff Myers, Zach Karen, and Greg Mance. Play action fake right over the middle, caught by Smolik, the tight end. He is knocked down at the 45 yard line, and that looked tough. That's Jimmy Ward. It'll be a first down for Toledo. The training staff out quickly to attend to Ward. First glance, I thought Smolik might have hit him in the head with his knee. Yeah, yeah. That may have been what happened. You may have seen Alonzo Russell there with a very sportsmanlike tap. Here we go on the right, the replay. Boy, he flipped him too. Ward, well, I just hope he's going to be okay. He's getting up. Walking off. A little unsteady, but happy to see that. If yep. you weren't with us earlier, you will see the interception he made later the night on Sports Center or later in our ball game tonight. He made one of the finest interceptions you'll see all year long in college football. I think he just got a I think he just got a little stinger in his left shoulder. So I saw him moving his left arm. I think it's maybe just a little stinger. Hope I think we'll see him back in the game, hopefully. Such a great player and an important part to the Huskies defense. Coming into the game with 289 career tackles, and the night he picked up his 10th career interception. 
First and 10 Toledo though at the Huskies 46. And the lefty rolling to his right throws across the body and it's in and out of the hands of the receiver Kareem Hunt. It'll be second down and 10. That was a well designed play too. He's almost faked to his left rolled to his right. No one was on Kareem Hunt. If he caught that ball he has some room some space to do some things. Watch Kareem Hunt right, Hunt right there. A little behind him he's a running back but he's talented enough to make that catch. Hunt drops it. Ah, I was going to say, Hunt drops out into the flat, and then the ball went through his hands a little bit high. Quint Kesnick has more on Jimmy Ward. Quint? Dave, the medical staff is looking at his left shoulder, doing a battery of tests as they just actually cleared him to come back on the field. When he's not out there, keep in mind that Northern Illinois is without their leader in the secondary. He makes all the checks. He makes all the calls. He comes back onto the field. There he is. Thank you, Quint, very much. And he's the quarterback of that defense. They need him out there, so not surprised to see him back out there. Third down and ten. Drive him. Was humming along. He's now had a couple of passes go awry. That last pass is what we call a high heater. <laughs> you got to put a little touch on that ball for Kareem Hunt. And Toledo is going to call for a timeout. Both teams, two timeouts remaining. Toledo has never led in this game. They're on a drive to try to get some points right now. Friday, it's Spurs Grizzly. Pacquiao versus Rios. Saturday, November 23rd, 9 p.m. Eastern and 6 p.m. Pacific, live on pay-per-view. As if it isn't difficult enough for Desmond Howard, he of the University of Michigan, to have to deal with an Ohio State person on game day. Look who we brought with us here. We got him surrounded, don't we? Chris Spielman <laughs> is joining us here. Chris, of course, a big fan of Maction, and uh, we're delighted to have you here in the booth. What do you think of the game so far? Uh, I'm a little surprised. I think both defenses have stood out, and to be 7-3 and minus 2 in the turnovers for Toledo is a, is a big deal. And uh, costly missed field goal. And in close games like this, if you got the ball in the red zone, you've got to be able to put points on the board. Both teams are well matched. A couple of years ago, this was an offensive show, 63 to 60. We've worked our way down to a surprising defensive struggle here. That's Hunt going in motion now next to the quarterback. And Owens will keep it. This is like a Northern Illinois play. Owens had some room, gets to the edge, and gets the first down. He gets to the 35, Desmond. That's what he didn't do right. on the play that led to the fourth down of the field goal. You're right about that. And the biggest difference between Owens and Lynch is, see how Owens got through the line of scrimmage and he headed towards the sideline? See, Lynch is going north and south. He's looking for guys to run over and run through. He's not going to run to the sideline like that. But both guys are very effective running the ball. We probably need to see more of that from Owens tonight. And he lets Hunt, oh, nice footwork by Hunt. He breaks loose. Gets into the 20 yard line, down to the 15, inside of there, to the 13 yard line. That time Hunt sought out the contact. Well, the lesson there is don't throw the ball to Hunt, hand him the ball. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what he does best. He, he's really explosive. The freshman has come on, has come on the past few weeks. And when you have two backs in this type of offense to keep him fresh, puts a lot of pressure on the defense. So from the 13, Owens completes the pass down to the 15. Not look, a couple of yards there. That's going to be all for Dwight Macon. It'll be second down and about eight to go for the Rockets. See, Chris is an Ohio boy like myself. We love some action, right? Well, we appreciate action. I mean, I got I called my college roommate, said let's go up and watch the Toledo Northern Illinois game, and like you, Desmond, I has a I have a Heisman vote, and yeah. I like to see guys in person. Exactly. If, if they're candidates, I want to see them in person, or if I don't see them in person, I want to see at least three game tapes on them and give a, an honest evaluation. And for the record. I'm fine with Spielman having a Heisman vote. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of guys out there with votes. So I'm like, what? Who? What? Are you kidding me? Well, You're okay with Spiel, that. Yeah, Spiel, right. yeah, Spielman's good. Well, he, the, he's good. The reason is, I mean, I, I take a lot of pride in it, and exactly. I take it very seriously. And That's right. I don't want to make a mistake, and I actually had Lynch in my top five last year. But like you said, you came up here so you can see a guy live and in person. That's how important it is for you. Absolutely. And, and the other thing is, guys, and, and, and Dave, you know this a little but it's, it's, a, it's a cancer game. It's breast cancer awareness. And so anytime I'm in the state of Ohio, especially, 
I try to support any event that I can. Yeah, those uniforms will be auctioned off online after the game. There'll be a hundred of them. Now the issue there is, is it a first down or not? It's going to be close to being first and goal. Hunt. Now the ball carrier waiting for the officials to give us an idea whether it's going to be a first down or not. Oh, I think he's short. You're not the only one that thinks he's short. Yeah. No, nope. wait a minute. The one they did give him the first down. Yeah. It is first and goal. This is the 14th play of the drive coming up. Remember, Toledo has never led in this game. Their first play from scrimmage was a strip sack that led to an NIU touchdown. And they're going wildcat with Kareem Hunt. Gets one block, and that's all. Maybe a half a yard. You see Jimmy Ward right there, Boomer Mays. What do you think of Ward, Chris? Uh, very good. I, I, and again, when you look at these players, especially the top half of the MAC, they have outstanding football players. The biggest difference between the MAC or, say, the Big Ten or the Big 12 is this, they don't have the numbers or depth. They have a lot of their young guys or develop, developmental guys, and they have a few guys that can play young. But they're really good, talented football players that are in a system. They know the system, and they play the system very well. That's the voice of Chris Spielman is joining us here for some action. On second and goal. That's Fluellen back into the game. No gain on the play. And Northern Illinois with a spirited stand here so far. Desmond, what do you do here on third and goal? Wow, I think it's time to take a shot at the end zone right now. A couple of direct snaps to um, Cream Hunt and the Wildcat, and now Fluellen up the middle. I don't think I don't think that Northern Illinois right now is worried about them running the ball on them. I think they need to throw the ball, take a shot to the end zone. I think I get Owens out on the edge, give him that run pass option. Yeah, run a little quarterback counter with him. But and guess what? I'm wrong. They're going wildcat again. Yeah. We're both wrong. <laughs> Only one, maybe? Maybe He's... Hunt can throw. Well, Macon is 17 wide. Hunt, he does throw. And it's intercepted in the end zone by Boomer Mays. Well, Hunt makes the stop. Hunt hesitated. A flag is down behind the play. It should have no effect on the interception. A third turnover by Toledo, and that one is really going to hurt. Costly turnover in the red zone. Man, he never saw him. Never saw him. Well, you have again the big playmaker from Northern Illinois stepping up and making a play. Face mask, number three. 15 yard penalty, first down. When one needs to be made. But I don't know if you go with that call. I mean, you got a pretty good quarterback that can run the football. Yeah. It's third and down. Yeah. You got two to get in, yeah. spread the field. We run the quarterback counter or the quarterback draw with Owens. Well, you're That's talking about anti-climax. That was a 16-play drive, zero points. Zero points. I think Jason Candle, the offensive coordinator, just got too clever, too creative. And, uh, man, it bit him in, in the backside. You saw a spring in Rod Carey's step. Yes, sir. In Northern Illinois, after all that, he's got his man, Jordan Lynch. And, Chris, I'll be excited to hear what you and Desmond, of course, think about Lynch and Heisman positioning all that as you get a look at him here. Number six, Lynch under some pressure here. Scrambles, fires, and hits his receiver, sliding safely at the 36-yard line for a first down. The catch made by Luke Ika. So what do you like about Lynch, Chris? Well, first of all, he's a winner, and he finds a way to get the job done. He's a better thrower of the ball than people think. He has great knowledge of this offense. He's the most valuable player in the MAC conference, and he's electrifying, and he's a guy that can take over a game single-handedly. He doesn't make mistakes. Good handoff here, and this is Stingley. He'll get inside the 40 and then leap for an additional three or four yards. Long run by Stingley of 31 yards. Desmond, is it fair to put Jordan Lynch in the same conversation with the Jameis Winston, the Johnny Manziels? I don't, I'm not sure he's as talented as Winston or Manziel, but he, like Spielman said, he's so important. He's the most outstanding player in this conference, so important to Northern Illinois. And um, he's a guy who... What he does on the field and what he means to his offense is just, you, know, it, it, you can't put, these are my first, my top five well, right you here. You got them I like, the top uh, five. Yeah, I have, them, I have them top five. I mean, but you talk about Manziel, you talk about uh, Jameis. I like A.J. McCarron. That's a guy who, yeah, I see, you, and you mentioned winner. Yeah. He's a winner, he's productive, he's efficient. But, um, you know, that's what, that's what Jordan Lynch is to me. That's why he's up in my top five, because he's a winner, he's productive, he's very efficient. 
You know, on second and five, he finds the open receiver. That should be a first down. Bruskison making the catch, and that will move the chains. First down and ten. Well, what do you guys ever think that a player from outside a BC, well, there won't be a BCS anymore, but you say a mid-major like the MAC, a uh, Mountain West, anybody will ever win a Heisman? Is it possible? Uh, no, uh, I don't think so. I think it's possible to get votes, and unless, uh, like I say, when I look at Jordan Lynch, I don't have him in my top three, but like Des, I have him in my top five. The reason being, this is a great sack there, and that hasn't had. That's only the seventh sack all season long. And there's there's this guy, Jaron Elliott, a Cleveland native, on the sack. That's going to be a loss of eight, second and eighteen coming up. Well, we have so many good quarterbacks this year. If you look at it, and you talk about the emergence right. of Jameis Winston, and, and you know Braxton Miller was a leading candidate coming in Correct. to the season. Yep. Now Braxton got hurt a few games and slowed. But he's really turned it on the past few games, and he's not even mentioned at all in any Heisman talk. Yeah, his level of play right now is nowhere near like Bryce Petty and Jameis Winston. I mean, those guys, because their numbers are so incredible. But you're right, he's playing at a high level yeah. right now, too. You know, people, people kind of forget about old Braxton Miller down there in Columbus. Yeah. But Dave, there's a point of what, why he's so valuable. He doesn't make a mistake. He doesn't try to force the ball. He trusts his legs. And he's able to get positive yards and understanding that he has field goal position without trying to force the ball and get a turnover in the red zone. Well, only five interceptions against 21 touchdowns coming into the game tonight. Lynch had all sorts of time. His line did the job, but Toledo did a great job in coverage. Sets up third down and 11. And a timeout being called by the Rockets. Might be a slot receiver in the NFL. I could see that. You that was my well next enough? question. Yeah. What do you guys think his future is? Yeah, we gotta see if he if he moves well enough. Uh, I don't think he's he's a quarterback though. But you know, I spoke to some NFL scouts last week uh, when they played Ball State, and they said that what they like about him is that he's willing to do whatever he needs to do to get on the field in the NFL. Chris, you're released from duty. That was we my appreciate pleasure. you stopping by. Thank you. I'm all about yeah. it, man. Action. <laughs> yes, sir. Time, time, time for some action. Action will continue in a moment. Thank you again to Chris Spielman. Hi, we're the Souls. We're new to town. Welcome to Monroe. So you can move more effortlessly. Wanted to open a new account, checking and savings. Oh, uh, we can help with that. We tend to do a lot of pay. You play? Yeah. Discover a mobile app that lets you bank more freely and feel at home more quickly. Chase, so you can. We have four hours to find your dad a gift, and he's got to have the best, so we need to stay focused. James, you're my rock. Can you keep it together? Sally, look at me. I need you to step it up, OK? We don't want the petting zoo all over again. I can't make any promises. Wow. I never doubted you guys for a second. AT&T makes you the hero this holiday season with iPhone 5S for zero down with AT&T Next. People are leaving BMW, Mercedes, and Lexus for Audi than ever before. The holidays won't last, and neither will the season of Audi. Visit AudiOffers.com today. Only the best of the best are featured in the top ten. It's a pretty exclusive club. Jordan with a J. I was on, I was on last night. The rest of us, we'll never know what it's like to be part of that inner circle. Yeah, Warbrook High School, full court buzzer beater. <sighs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, it is awesome. Welcome to the club. Thank you. With the Big 12 title up for grabs, it is win and control your destiny. Saturday night on ABC, the undefeated Bears, led by quarterback Bryce Petty, are in position to move up the BCS standings and remain in the national title picture, while Clint Shelf, the number 10 Cowboys, aim to add their name to that BCS conversation. Saturday night, football presented by Windows, Baylor, Oklahoma State. Saturday night at 8 Eastern on ABC, and Oklahoma State's where Dez is headed next with the game day crowd. 
Looking forward to that one. Oh, oh, game. oh man, is it ever a game. Yes, On sir. third and 11, Lynch, he won't make it. He will not make it. Junior Silvestri and Christian Smith sent him back. No gain on the play, and out for his second attempt of the night is Matthew Sims. He missed his first one. Well, the defensive coordinators for these teams are happy. The offensive coordinators are not. Miss earlier was from 23. This one will be from 40. And it was wide, not by much, but you could see it. Toledo, another celebration. And Northern Illinois is now 0 for 2 in field goals. I tell you, we well, had Toledo guys just all over, jumping over the line. Those guys are determined out there. You look at that effort right now by the Rockets and senior night, just something in the air, Dave. This is an interesting matchup so far. Well, and I also wonder how much it plays into the last, the last three years. Getting blown out in 2010. The game here in 2011, it was just a heartbreaker for this team, losing 63 to 60. Losing in DeKalb last year, 31 to 24, turning the ball over four times. That's got to be in the back of the minds of the guys who have gone through this for Toledo against North Illinois for years. Yeah, like you said, there are some seniors who never beat the Huskies. They've never won a game against the Huskies. And that's going to be a first down as we check in with Chris Cotter and Trevor Maddich in studio, guys. Dave, coming up with a hat. Trevor Maddich will be here with me. We'll take a look at a blockbuster trade in Major League Baseball. We're just three weeks removed from the end of the World Series, and we've already got a big deal. We'll have the latest on the Jameis Winston investigation, and also we'll take a closer look at this explosive Baylor offense and what has happened with the Bears. All of a sudden, national powerhouse, Dave. Yeah, they are. They're an amazing team to watch. Damian Jones Moore, five yards, but he paid a price at the end. Boomer Mays and George Rainey on the stop. Second down at five. If I'm Jason Candle, I'll keep running the ball downhill. I'll take a five yard carry any day of the week. Well, they're going to get four here, Des. It'll be third down and a yard to go. Toledo with just one timeout. Northern Illinois has two. Bass on the stop. But for Toledo, the drive chart, they have been their own worst enemy. That last interception thrown by Kareem Hunt in the Wildcats. Yeah, I think uh, Jason Cannon, the offensive coordinator, outsmarted himself on that play. To drive the ball, what, 14 plays and then 16. 16 plays and walk away with no points. Man, that's that hurts in a game like this. Well, they go unbalanced on the left side here with two tight ends in here, and they go underneath. The back just sort of disappears, and it should be a first down. This play's not over yet. How about Jones Moore? You still can't see him, but he gets the first down to almost a 49-yard line. I'm still waiting for the whistle. I mean, these guys, they, they just moved the pile. That was a very determined run, not only by the running back, but by the offensive line to keep pushing that pile forward to get that first down. Jones Moore will stay in the game. He splits out wide to the quarterback's right. He disappears into that crowd, but the, the pile just keeps moving. Great job by the offensive line. We got 90 seconds left in the half. Toledo's got to pick up the pace just a little bit. Owens will keep it. Finds one gap, broke one tackle, and picks up six to the 45. Brought down by Ken Bishop, a senior out of Lauder Hill, Florida. But the clock continues to roll. Play action, Owens waiting. Down the field, has a man wide open, caught. Touchdown, Alonzo Russell. Alonzo Russell is having the monster first half so far. And that was just a straight go route. A straight go route right down the right side of the field. Great throw, too, by Owens. I mean, that's, that's pitch and catch. It made it look very easy. 
Very easy. You said they, they had 90 seconds at one point. They got to hurry up. They, uh, they took a shot down the field. That's how you hurry up. Six plays, 77 yards and 218. Still 51 seconds on the clock. First time tonight that Toledo has been in front in this game. And this despite three turnovers in the first half, they're ahead. That's a tribute to their defense for sure. And Northern Illinois has had two field goals missed, one of them from 23 yards. But Matthew Sims may be called upon still again to perform for the Huskies and maybe win this game if this stays close like it is. Well, potential Rose Bowl opponents highlight Saturday afternoon's games at ABC or ESPN2 as Braxton Miller and the number three Buckeyes look to clinch the leaders' division with a win against the Hoosiers. That's where Chris Spielman's going to be. While Marcus Mariota, the number five Ducks, need a win versus the Wildcats, stay in contention with the granddaddy of them all. College football presented by K Jewelers and Five Hour Energy, Indiana, Ohio State, and Oregon, Arizona. Available Saturday nationally on ABC or ESPN2 at 3.30 Eastern. Indiana can run up and down the field. That's not uh, that will yes, be an sir. interesting test for Ohio State. Yeah, it really will be. Yeah, they can throw the ball. They don't play much defense, but they, <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they can there throw is, the ball around. Yeah. There is that, yes. Right. <laughs> there you see Alonzo Russell. We talked about him, just a sophomore out of the Washington, D.C. area. Yeah. And there's another guy. We, we always like to use the expression Sunday players. There's definitely a chance if he can stay healthy. Yeah, no doubt about that. So Northern Illinois short their top two receivers and a big time kick returner Paris Logan will take a knee in the end zone and you wonder exactly how that is affecting the NIU offense and their play calling. Celebrating its ninth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Since 2005, Allstate has contributed more than $3.3 million in scholarship funds. All right, two timeouts. You know, you're at the 25. Aggressive yeah. for Northern Illinois here? You know, I think that with the two wideouts out the game right now, it's really going to be interesting to see the play call that they're going to come up with. They ran right up the middle for no gain the first play. You know, at some point, 43 seconds, 42 seconds on the clock, and it's going down. If you want to score, you're going to have to drop Jordan Lynch back and try to take a shot down the field, just like Toledo did with Terrence Owens. At stake, among many things for Northern Illinois, the MAC West Championship, it's a stake for both of these schools. Lynch now gets the play knocked out of bounds, a receiver. Jacob, uh, that's Semich with the catch. And that'll be a first down. Clock stop at 24. So that may change their approach with two timeouts. What I was going to say is Toledo wins this game. They control their own destiny. If Northern Illinois wins, they're in the MAC championship game in a couple of weeks. Lynch wants to go long. Fires has a man caught and inside the 40-yard line. Jawan Breskison making the grab for 28. And Northern still has their two timeouts. That was a big play, huge play. Confusion in the secondary for the Rockets. Allowed Breskin to sit there right there on the sideline, wide open. Plenty of time again. Man in motion underneath, trying to get out of bounds, and he did. That's not going over very well on the Toledo bench. That's where he was knocked out of bounds. <laughs> but he did in the eye of the official. It'll be second and three. Just a simple drag route by Simmich. But an excellent effort on his part to get out of bounds. Excellent effort. So Northern Illinois is down to one timeout. They've got nine seconds. And we'll see what Rod Carey would like to do. I, mean, I think you, you have to take a shot at the end zone. I'll say, what, 10 seconds on the clock, at least two plays. I would say you got to take a shot. Yeah, the game clock, the scoreboard says 10. Yeah, the scoreboard says 10 seconds. <laughs> so it's probably, ours is probably like 9.9. .9. Right. 
So for Matthew Sims, he's got to shake off the two that didn't go his way. Like any kicker who misses one or two, he's got to refocus and get the confidence back. It's not like he's missed them badly. Right, right. And you're 100% right. You don't want the guy to fall into the tank. There's, there's a, a lot of football left to be played. We've still got a whole second half. You get, need to keep this guy encouraged, keep him, you know, upbeat. Don't let him fall in the tank over those first two that he missed. Lynch running out of time has to do something. You'll never see where he's out of bounds when Lynch threw it away. So with five seconds to go, that looks like it's going to be field goal time, and it is. So here comes Sims. He's missed from 23 and from 40. This will be 47. Again, not much of a breeze really being any kind of a factor on the field here. The holder is the punter, Tyler Weedle. NIU hasn't seen a field goal made in their last four attempts of 40 yards or over. And we're going to get a timeout by Toledo. You were a big icing the kicker fan? Hey, well, that's what they're doing right now, and I don't blame <laughs> them. I don't blame them. He missed two already. I'll ice them. Let's get down to the field and quit. Dave, when Matt Sims missed that second field goal, the first guy to greet him on the sideline was head coach Rod Carey, who was pretty upset with the kicker, who's been very good coming into this game this year. He said, you look tight, you look cold. Make sure you go through a complete warm-up and spend a lot of time by the heaters. And that's the most difficult thing for these specialists when the weather gets cold. You know, how the ball doesn't carry as far, and then just keeping yourself loose, relaxed, and warm on the sideline. And there's a look back. That is a look usually you reserve for a guy who misses a block or drops a pass. That's directed to his kicker. He'll smile at him if he can nail this one. Yes, he will. <laughs> Low snap. Missed it again. Three chances for Northern Illinois to get three points. And Toledo sprinting toward their locker room joyfully as they lead 10-7. Last week, Northern Illinois went to the dressing room trading at halftime against Ball State. They're an excellent second-half team. A week ago, Toledo had a 38-point halftime lead against Buffalo and barely hung on. Quint is standing by with Rod Carey. Rod Carey in position with Quinn right now. Go ahead, guys. Coach, what's it been like dealing uh, on offense without Tommy Lee Lewis and, and, and Duran? Well, I don't know that that's necessarily hurting us. It's hurting us as we're getting down here and trying field goals and missing them. Got to make those touchdowns. What, what do you tell your kicker, Matt Simpson, at halftime? Well, nothing. He's a kicker. You just let him be, and he'll figure it out. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> you know? That's, that's the every, for a kicker, right? every coach in America is watching goes, yeah, exactly, Coach. <laughs> Don't even bother plan. talking to him. Wow. Put him in the corner and feed him ice chips. <laughs> Maybe a carrot. Go figure it out yourself, son. Meantime, you know what? We're laughing, but to Matthew Sims, it's not a laughing matter. He's going to have a chance to... You know, it says it all right there in the back of his helmet, the hard way, and it has been so far for Northern Illinois. 10-7, to 7, Toledo in front. That's what I always tell my producer, Rib. Just leave me alone. I'll figure it out. We got some breaking news in baseball before we get to college football. As first reported by CBSSports.com, a block. quarter about to start here in ESPN College Football Primetime. Northern Illinois trying to remain unbeaten, trying to remain a force in the BCS, trying to win the MAC West, but Desmond has been a night of threes. Three turnovers by Toledo. Right. They lead by three, yeah. and Northern Illinois has missed three field goals. Yeah. For Northern Illinois, they're also missing two key players. 
out of their offense two outstanding receivers who give them a lot so what do, how do you adjust now if you're Northern Illinois to get your offense together yeah I think you have to put the ball into the hands of, of the, the Heisman Trophy candidate right now Jordan Lynch and let him do what he's been able to do throughout the season this isn't the first time they've been down at half you know I think this team is poised I think they know they've been here before they've made a lot of mistakes in this first half missing three field goals and obviously that man right there Tommy Lee Lewis his absence has been felt but at the same time you have a lot of confidence in um, Jordan Lynch and what he's able to do offensively I think this this first drive is going to be really key I think they're going to run the ball with Lynch put Stingley back into the ball game and then start to use these other wideouts that we saw catching the pass catching passes earlier too and who was the first guy out of the Northern Illinois locker room well, we were enjoying white chicken chili. Their kicker, Matthew Sims, who was practicing by himself. Yes, he was. And I must say, Dave, that white chicken chili is <laughs> outstanding. You know, I, I have to admit, I've had two bowls so far, and I'm, I'm hoping it's there after the game is over so I can get a third bowl. Well, great coverage by the Toledo special teams, and this is what we were talking about. This is just a few minutes ago, but everybody else from Northern except one of the guy in the locker room. And Matthew Sims and Quint, uh, it's cold down there. It certainly has to affect the way he's kicking. Yeah, he did come out early, and the fan gave him some grief when he missed, and then finally he made one. They gave him a mock cheer. I spoke to Toledo head coach Matt Campbell. He said this has been a very strange game with the two wide receivers out. Kind of feels that the field has shrunk for Northern Illinois. So the key will be to tackle Jordan Lynch as Spencer runs for eight. And, and playing assignment football now as they anticipate Lynch getting more carries will be key. Well, we talked about turnovers were a big deal in this game a year ago. Toledo turned the ball over four times and ended up losing 31 to 24. And Northern Illinois in that game last year outscored Toledo 21 nothing in the third quarter. Northern has been a devastating team in the second half this year. Lynch on the run wide open flag down. The pass is caught by Breskison, but let's see what this flag is all about. Having a very light night for penalties. You're right about that. Yeah. Just one. <laughs> Just one. Which was the uh, personal foul penalty on the face mask on the interception in the end zone. That's yep. been it. I mean, you have two sound ball clubs. They both play very good. You know, they don't make a lot of mistakes. Legal formation. Five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. We play second down. Well, this late in the season, that penalty surprises me, and it's certainly a surprising Rod Carey as well in the black jacket. Yeah, that's right. That, that, that penalty should never happen this late in the season. That's just a bonehead penalty right there. Well, Rod Carey would agree with you, but he would say it was a bonehead call. And he's still, I think he finally decided to walk away from that one. Well, Northern Illinois had only one penalty in their last two games. It's a disciplined bunch. So it's now second down and seven. Spencer is the tailback. Get one block to the 20. The 25 and more. Brindley all the way out to the 45-yard line. Jacob Brindley. A sophomore from Lake Zurich, Illinois, with a big play. And that's just a bubble screen. Excellent job by Jacob Brindley just running after the catch. Put a nice move on Cheatham Norris to get some extra yards at the end of that run. And this is what they're going to Hey, someone needs to step up. You have your two starting wideouts out the game. These guys are going to have to step up. They know the offense. They're going to have to get the ball in their hands and do something with it. They go back to Stingley into the game at tailback. He carries some tacklers across the 50 for a gain of eight to the Toledo 47-yard line.
and do something with it. They go back to Stingley into the game at tailback. He carries some tacklers across the 50 for a gain of eight to the Toledo 47-yard line. It's a lot at stake in this game for both teams. The Mac West position in the Mac Championship game is Northern Illinois if they win. Also, they're in one of six still undefeated. They're 16th in the BCS. They could be the BCS buster again. 14-game road win streak. They haven't lost a Mac game since October 1st of 2011, and that's a first down. So Vestry on the tackle so you see the record that northern illinois has put together over the last couple of years only oregon and alabama have won more games since in 2010 from now to now i should say than northern illinois and they've gone through a lot of coaches recently jerry kill dave doran tom matukowicz who's now the defensive coordinator in toledo was the interim coach for a bowl game and now rod carey with the opportunity and he's done well in his first season of course Lynch fires. Oh, and a beautiful grab made inside the 15-yard line by Breskison. Wow, that was fantastic. Never took his eyes off of it. Cameron Cole on the stop. Watch how he makes an adjustment. The ball's thrown inside. He gets inside the defensive back, comes in and makes a spectacular catch. That's what I'm saying, though. Someone needs to come up with a big play. You're going to have to make a play right now, step up and come up big for your quarterback, Jordan Lynch, because the two starting wideouts, they're not in the game. This is an opportunity for some young wideouts to make a name for themselves. And Breskison is a redshirt sophomore from Osaka, Ontario, Canada. Lynch will keep it to the 10. Lynch to the 5, and Lynch broke the plane. Touchdown, Huskies. Big, big drive coming out of halftime for Northern Illinois. The momentum has switched. It has swung into the favor of the Huskies. And you know what? You, you talk about what, what the Huskies do in the second half of games. They've outscored their opponents in the third quarter. 100 points to 39 points in the fourth quarter 106 points to 46 points so this is a team that they make second half adjustments and they come out and they play a very very good football we have not heard from the replay booth today it was a touchdown previous play is under further review but we're going to now james robinson is in the replay booth and he wants a closer look it appeared to us to be a touchdown let's see if he got the ball over the plane of the end zone before he was out I can't imagine that being overturned, but I have been wrong before. It looks like it to me. It looks like he uh, broke the plane with the football before he stepped out of bounds. I think there's not enough evidence to overturn that call so you might even get it confirmed out of this down. you might instead of the call stand which is always the we couldn't find yeah. a way to overturn it. you might even get this one to be confirmed well the one thing we know about the huskies they're a strong strong second half team so see what the call is after further review ruling on the field stands touchdown stands we're Conf looking for the confirm oh, come on that's we confirmed couldn't get confirmation man come. Oh, well, at least it's a man. touchdown. Yeah, so it's a touchdown. It's, it's, you know, yeah. I think that's the correct call. So Northern Illinois retakes the lead. They scored in their first possession of the first half. That was a 21-yard drive. That one was 86 yards. Matthew Sims would love to put this PAT in there for his confidence. No problem at all. So... The ball is back in the Rockets' court. Jordan Lynch leads them down without his top two receivers. Others did indeed step up on that drive. And at the end, it's the Heisman candidate who breaks the plane. Confirmed. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Hi there. Welcome to the gallery. How do you react when you first see this? It looks kind of like a date. But tomorrow night on ESPN, Blake Bortles and the number 18 Knights need to keep winning to stay atop the American and remain in the BCS picture. They face Gary Nova and a Scarlet Knights team that are a win away from bowl eligibility. College football primetime, served by Applebee's, Rutgers, Central Florida Thursday, 7.30 on ESPN, and of course, live on Watch ESPN. We were talking about George O'Leary and the job he's done in Orlando. Pretty remarkable. Very, yeah, exactly. He's, he's a heck of a coach. You know, he's a guy who, one of these coaches who's just able to get the maximum potential out of his players. And he can out-scheme opponents. And that's why I respect so much about Coach O'Leary. 
There's Rod Carey in Northern Illinois. His team trailed in halftime. Which they had done four other occasions. They've been behind in games ten times. They haven't lost. And we have a long way to go here, though. The Rockets will get the football back for the first time in the second half. And this is Reedy. Made one man miss. What good coverage by the Huskies. Reedy will only get to the 20-yard line. And Northern Illinois, that's something that Des just talked about. 107-39 in the third quarter. 206-85 to in the second half of the season. Northern has 100 points in every quarter this year. They yeah, second have, half team. They have overwhelmed opponents. And Toledo, they were a fantastic first half team a week ago, and they played UB. They took a 38-0 lead and hung on for a 51-41 win. David Flewellen, number 22, and a tailback for the Rockets, wearing some special uniforms tonight for breast cancer awareness that will be auctioned off online the following the game. Flewellen. Playing off his blockers very well. How good a run is this? That should be a first down. Deshaun Durant shoved him out of bounds, but Flewellen, such patience. Very patient runner. Very experienced runner. Great blocks on the perimeter by the wideouts. But look, hole's not there. Doesn't like it right there. Let me get outside where I can get a good block by Bernard Reedy and get a first down. Llewellyn again, and this time he has turned over after a three-yard gain. Jamal pass, and Durant, number six and number one. There's Durant right there on the stop. Second down at about seven coming up. I think the offensive coordinator, Candle, has found something that he likes in this running game. I still believe that Toledo's offensive line right now, they're just getting so much, such good leverage against Northern Illinois' defensive line that they can run the ball. They don't need to get cute. Every time they get cute in the first half, it cost them. They need to stick with what's working. Play action. Owens gets rid of it quickly. Has a receiver. Caught. Out of bounds. 37-yard line. Short gain. There he is Bernard Reedy. Yeah, the first half so uh, pretty much was the uh, Alonzo Russell show. Mm -hmm. Number nine. I mean, he had a big first half. We didn't call Reedy's name a lot, but he's the guy who's the go-to receiver, the leading receiver on the team. And, you know, they got to get him into the mix, too. Uh, they definitely want to Get the ball in his hands in the second half. He's in the backfield right now, probably motion out of the backfield. Five out of eight and third downs for the Rockets. They face third and four to go. There goes Reedy right now, number one. Swing pass. This is caught by Kareem Hunt. Can he make one man miss? He can. He is hurled down, but it will be a first down. Jimmy Ward tossing Hunt aside, but first down for the Rockets. Nice safe pass. Remember, he tried that ball earlier, that, that pass earlier to Hunt. It was a, a high heater, and this time uh, Owens put a little touch on it, so Hunt can catch it and get to the outside. No problem with wrapping up and tackling there for Ward. Back to the ground game straight ahead. A pickup of three yards that time, raining in on the stop against Hunt. Hunt has been so incredibly valuable for Toledo with the in-and-out problems of David Fluellen. Although he is back tonight, but he had missed essentially three full games after his injury early in the Bowling Green game in October. Hunt ran for 186 in the win over Buffalo last week. And 148 of those, of those yards came in the first 30 minutes. <laughs> He's a home run hitter. You get him out there on the edges, he can go the distance. Gets a good block that time, and he will get into NIU territory, and that should be a first down. That looked like 54, Jeff Myers, the left guard that led the way. And that'll be a first down for the Rockets. And that's what they're doing. They're running the power game right now with Hunt. Get a, get a blocker in front of him. Keep it in between the tackles. I'll tell you, this offensive line right now, they're controlling the line of scrimmage for the Rockets. And they're staying on the ground, Desmond. No, read the, no reason to change anything that's so successful. Hunt tripped up. He gets in between the 41 and 42-yard line. Set the kind of arena in there on the stop for the Huskies. And this is very basic football right here. And number 54, the left guard, Jeff Myers. He pulled around again to lead Hunt through the hole. Hunt one more time, and the pushing and shoving match 
will get him to the 39-yard line to pick up two. Sets up a very interesting third down and three. Bishop in there, number 93. He's the last guy off the pile right there on the stop for Northern Illinois. And Hunt motioned out to the top of your screen. I wouldn't be surprised to see Owens keep the ball and run it himself. Like right here? Yes, sir. And he is going to have the first down. He got to the 36. Bass in there on the stop, but Toledo keeps the drive alive. Jason Candle, the offensive coordinator of Toledo, is going with the ground and pound game plan right now, and it's working. His offensive lineman, I'm... They probably told him at halftime, Coach, we can control the line of scrimmage. Put the ball on our shoulders, keep running it, and let us do what we do. We're very effective right now. They're eating up the clock. The only, only point is, if they get down the red zone, Dave, you got to come away with touchdowns, not field goals. Well, that's been the problem for Northern Illinois. Oh, pardon me. They have had three field goals missed in this game, but they lead 14 to 10. Now with Jamal Bass out, 41. Cody Hazlett will check in to replace him. Samolik in motion, 81, the tight end. Fake looking over the top, looking deep, looking for the end zone, looking for Reedy. Did he hang on? Yes, he did. That was an excellent catch. Yes, wow. he did. It is a yes, touchdown. And we didn't talk about it much in the first half. It was the Alonzo Russell show. But like I said, at halftime, they had to say, listen, we got to get the ball into the hands of our other playmaker, Reedy. And it was just a post route. And I'm telling you, always put the right amount of air under that ball just so Reedy can run right up under it. What an excellent grab. He has strong hands. He's fast. This guy will be playing on Sundays. You know, we, 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 we use that one machine in the weight room, the captain of crush, <laughs> the captain of crush to help build your grip. Field was a touchdown. This play is under further review. Well, it'll be interesting to see what they're looking for. It appeared to us to be a clean score, but yeah, yeah. I tried that captain of crush. Yeah, the captain of crush, man. It builds up your forearms. It helps your grip, and uh, they have the gripper, too, which is an old-school machine. I used to use that when I was a, with Mike Gittleson at the University of Michigan. Look, there's a, a machine you got to squeeze to, to build up your forearms and help your grip when you catch a ball like that. That's why my man Reedy came up with that fantastic grab. I don't see anything that should cause this... No, it might be turned there, over. But we can't see what happens to the football at that yeah. point. And I never saw the football come out. Correct. And we have to be fair to the official, who you're going to see in your picture here any second. Yeah. Pop in there. There's an official on the spot. That's a 10-play 80-yard drive in 3 minutes and 49 seconds if this call stands. Right. The other thing, it was so it's such classic play calling. Run, run, pound, 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 over the yeah. top, exactly. and it worked. Yeah, you know, it, it was just a matter of time before they would take a shot because what happens is when the defense... When their defense knows that their defensive line is getting controlled that 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 much, they're going to have to start playing closer to the line of scrimmage, closer, and then they knew, hey, we could take one, take a shot over the top to Reedy. It was just a matter of time before Owens put one right out there, and Reedy came up with the catch. Yeah, microphone wasn't working, but the hand signal is all you need to see to put Toledo back in front, 16 to 14. That's a captain of crush touchdown <laughs> grab right there, I'm telling you. That thing blew my forearms up earlier when we worked out. Well, Reedy now with a catch in 37 straight games. He had one earlier in this half, and you're right. He had a very quiet first half, but as you mentioned, Desmond, he was getting a lot of attention in the first half, so Toledo has found a way to get him out and open, and Toledo ups it up to 17-14. to 14. The ball is back in Northern Illinois' court, and after a quiet first half offensively, are we in for second-half explosions from these two teams? Here's your score in time. Desmond, our third lead change of the night. Here's how it happened. Right here, Bernard Reedy's going to go stem straight up the field. At this point, Moore think it's going to be a go route. So he opens his hip for a go route, but Reedy comes underneath for a post route. And Owens put just enough air up under the ball for Reedy to run right underneath it. Now, I don't know if this is yelling or encouragement, but either way, a little pat at the end there to say, hey, I'm with you. Yeah, Let's he, do it better next time. Yeah, he was yelling some encouragement to his young DB. 
Great crowd on hand here, by the way. It's under 40 degrees, and the glass bowl is more than half full yes, uh, tonight here in Toledo. This, this, crowd, this town's excited about this game. The students are excited. It's an opportunity for Toledo to get a little revenge, to be a spoiler for the BCS hopes for Northern Illinois. And a chance to take control of the Mac West race and get in that MAC championship game. Now, a lot more has to happen for Toledo to win the MAC West than for Northern Illinois. If the Huskies win this game, they walk out of here as the Western champions with one game left in their season next week against Western Michigan. And that is a unfortunate turn of events for Toledo is that flag will send that ball out a lot further out than it would be for a touchback. Potential Rose Bowl opponents highlight Saturday afternoon's games on ABC or ESPN2. As Paxton Miller, the number three Buckeyes look to clinch the leaders division with a win against the Hoosiers. Marcus Mariota and the number five Ducks need a win versus the Wildcats to stay in contention for the granddaddy of them all. College football presented by K Jewelers and Five Hour Energy. Indiana, Ohio State, Oregon, Arizona, available Saturday on ABC or ESPN 2 at 3.30. And our Discover BCS standings, we got the percentages there, and a lot of talk between three and four there, Des, between Ohio State and Baylor. Yes, sir. A big game this week for Baylor, too, against Oklahoma State and Stillwater. I'll be there. 50-yard line, the catch made by Jawan Breskison for a first down for Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois is in the BCS standings number 16. And we, it gets a little complicated as far as their chance to make it. But the other problem they have is Fresno State at 15 above them is blocking them from maybe being the BCS spoiler they were a year ago. When they got to the Discover Orange Bowl, Lynch caught his own fumble. What a lucky hop. A <laughs> lucky hop. That ball popped up in the air, and he was able to have the presence of mind to grab it. And, you know, you don't see Lynch separated from the ball often. But what a hit right there. That was Junior like Silvestri. Junior Silvestri, yeah. yeah, their leading tackler. Yeah, you never know where that ball is going to go. It could have gone backwards. could have gone a lot of places. Oh, yeah. They also picked up a yard. Sebastiano in motion. This is Stingley, the downhill power runner. And that's what Stingley does. Gets down low and hits. Get to 10 and the first down, Chase Murdoch on the stop. And that's exactly who he is, a downhill power runner. 72% of his rushing yards have come after the first contact with a defender. 72%. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's 588 yards after contact for Stingley, and he gets more there. That's Lynch on the carry, and it will be about five for Jordan Lynch. There is Stingley. And it's interesting also because they can change it up with James Spencer, who's about 60 pounds lighter. He scored right. the first touchdown for yep. the Huskies in the game. At the moment, though, Stingley stays in. He's short of the first down by a couple. Murdoch, number 40, again, in on the stop. He's a very good player. Sophomore from Barrington, Illinois. So the good news for the Rockets is he'll be around a little longer. Third and two. Now they go to a power backfield here. Then Sebastiano in motion, and it's going to be Lynch. Oh, good cut back by Lynch, and he's free. It'll be a touchdown, Jordan Lynch. Excellent cutback by Lynch. And you know, he's a guy who wants to go north and south. He gave a fake like he was going to run towards the sideline, and he cut it right up. Look at that big hole. Excellent blocks by the interior lineman. And Des Desroy Maxwell, great block by him out there. He was part of that power formation. He was joined by Rob Sterling, number 47 in the backfield. And there was no disguising the intention. So we've had a little bit of an explosion. Third touchdown in this quarter after a low-scoring first half. We saw the length of the drive for Northern Illinois. No problem on the PAT, and the Huskies have regained the lead. Four lead changes in this battle for Mac West supremacy. Jordan Lynch is on the Heisman list of the man who has one of those trophies hanging somewhere in the garage. <laughs> Jordan Lynch all the way. And once he gets his shoulders squared, you're not going to get him. Now, how will Toledo respond?
visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Mid-30s tonight in Toledo in the famed Glass Bowl. There's your score in time with Desmond Howard. I'm Dave Lamont. Quinn Kesnick, our eyes and ears on the field. Great action this evening with Northern Illinois trying to not only keep things kicking in the BCS, keep a 23-game MAC winning streak going, a 14-game road streak going, but win the MAC West. And see what Jordan Lynch, you said it, Desmond, without his top two threats, his receiving threats, Tommy Lee Lewis and Deron Brown. Brown tried to give it a go. Lewis never dressed out for the game. Lynch would have to put more on his shoulders. It's Bernard Reedy. Returned three kicks for TDs a season ago. But it's not going to get one now. He is upended on a tough tackle. Let's go back and take a look at these touchdowns in the third quarter. Here's Jordan Lynch right now. He loves to go between the tackles, but he hits the edge right there because they outnumbered the defenders. Easy touchdown for him, but this one right here is so impressive the way he read his blocks and then turned on a little speed, too. He's not known to be a fast quarterback, but it was so wide open right there. No one's going to catch him. Two great runs by Jordan Lynch, and that's why he's one of the guys who's on my Heisman list right now. He's so important to that offense, so important. I can't think of a player in the country who's more important to their offense than Jordan Lynch. What would A&M look like without Johnny Menzel? I like that Mike Evans kid. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's special. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he, might be a, he might win the Belitnikov. I mean, that kid there is a beast. Second down and seven coming up after the game. There is Jordan Lynch. So much speculation we'll start to hear in the offseason when his college career winds up what his NFL future is going to be. That'll be a, a pretty lively debate. Jordan Lynch? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I spoke to some NFL scouts um, last week. We covered the Ball State game, and they said that the thing that they really like about Jordan Lynch is that he's willing to change positions. So they'll look at him really closely because they know they may be able to put him somewhere else he wouldn't have a problem with it. Back to the ground game we go. Toledo has had success, and that's a short game that time. Northern Illinois says they recovered the football. The officials say down, so Jimmy Ward's going to have to bring that back. <laughs> Jimmy is going to lobby all the way back, but it's going to be third down in about five. No movement from the officials at all about that. Flewellen is the tailback. Reedy back on the field after that tough hit he took on the kickoff return. Make sure the ball didn't come out right there. Oh, it's out. It's out, yeah. but the officials... When did it come out? Yeah. Yeah, hit a whistle, yeah. They ruled him down. Yep. Uh, oh, wait a I second. I thought I heard a whistle. They, yeah. Are they going to challenge it? Timeout. Oh, timeout. Timeout. Northern Illinois. First charge timeout. They may have called that timeout to give the officials another look at that. Well, the replay booth reviews every play. Yeah. So if they don't like. Seconds on the game clock. Thank you. Well, he gets his timeout to the side judge there, Rod Carey. All Let's right, see, see if we can again. find out. Yeah, where's the ball? There it is, and we can't. Ooh. You know. Now, the rule in college. If you get an immediate pickup, it's your ball. Right. Um, so if this is ruled a fumble, and you're going to see the ball. The ball is out right there. Yep. Here's the ball right here. And this guy is not down here yet on the ground. They may rule that a fumble. Now, this was a tough one for James Robinson in the replay booth, and a big one. Yes, yes, this is a big, yeah, you're right about that. Because it would be potentially Toledo's fourth turnover. And it was never ruled from the replay booth. We never heard the official say, the referee never said this play was being further reviewed. Not once. And it looks like Toledo is about to snap the ball. So, they maintain possession. Well, the booth didn't see anything wrong there. So, the play stands as called. Owens underneath. Oof, Reedy, sweet move. Breaking ankles that time, and Reedy gets out to the 41-yard line for the first down. Ken Bishop and Jimmy Ward brought him down. 
That move was sweeter than a watermelon pack of now later right there. And that's what Reed can do, though. He can make you miss in space. He can run up under post, post route passes and look at him right here. Mm. Nice quick move. Great feet. Pass along the near sideline. Going to be catch for Alonzo Russell. And he'll be a couple of yards short. He'll be second down and two coming up. Not sure what happened in that locker room uh, at halftime, but it's, it's clear that the Rockets want to get the ball into the hands of Bernard Reedy this second half. It's a pretty solid strategy, if you ask me. Hunt straight ahead. He will. I don't think he got the first down. He's going to be a little bit short. Third down and about a yard. That time you saw Michael Santa Catarina and Joe Windsor, number seven and 97, team up on the stop. So third down and one. Now, last time Toledo was in this position, they went to empty and they kept the ball in the T Terrence Owens' hands to run the quarterback, and he ran with it. Now they're in the eye formation. Power eye, straight ahead, fullback, first down. Good call, good call. Something you'll see every down from them, giving it straight to the fullback. Yeah, Let Zach. Barrel in there for the first down. Big Zach Rosenbauer, who had a key block on another drive in this half. I think that's his first carry of the year, and it's an important one. Very important one. Good call by Jason Cannell, the offensive coordinator. Back to Hunt. Good hole there. Oh, what a tackle. Is that Ward? Yep. Yes, sir. Wow. Gain of three. It looked like Hunt was going to do a lot better, and Ward just sacrificed himself and took out Hunt's legs. That Ward, he's a ball hawk. He's always around the ball. He comes up, he tackles well, he covers extremely well. Had an incredible interception in the first half. And he's the quarterback back there, too. Make sure everyone's lined up correctly. Excellent night of action here at the Glass Bowl. Third, make that second down and seven. Hunt again, disappears, keeps the pile moving to the 39. Coming up third down and two, Boomer Mays and many others in on the stop for the Huskies defense of Jay Neiman. Seems as though the Rockets are really content right now of just controlling the line of scrimmage. And when you control the line of scrimmage, you can control the clock. And that's what they're doing. Taking a lot of time out the clock, picking up first downs, running the ball. They're doing a really good job of, of controlling the tempo of this game. And keeping Jordan Lynch off the field. That's Reedy in motion. Fake it to him. Quarterback keeper. Owens, did he make the first down? Doesn't appear to be. It's close. You know, it's it's close, close, but you see the official coming in. Yeah, it's close. He has him short, so you've got fourth down coming up. Not very far to go. Long field goal. you got a great kicker, but you go for it here. I think you go for it. Well, here's your answer. Here comes Zach Rosenbauer I think again. You go for it. Yeah, they're bringing out the big bodies. Rosenbauer's coming out. A big receiver, 14, Justin Olak, although he's going to set up wide. David Flewellen is the tailback. There go the big guys. Unbalanced line to the left. Fourth down, Flewellen. Wow! <laughs> Did you see that? First down! What a great second effort by Fluella in a, a wonderful, just a, a heads up job by his offensive lineman who caught him. Greg Mance, number 75, who caught him <laughs> and, and, and drug him to the first down marker, beyond the first down marker. Great, just excellent play by Fluella and Greg Mance. Greg Mance has played a lot of football. This, this is, he started 36 <laughs> consecutive games. And this time, no help. And he barely gets a yard. Jamal Bass, who's back into the game, taking down Kareem Hunt. Well, that was part of that gripper right there. Your Captain Crush gripper helped him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> along with some deadlifting there. Yes, sir. Wow. The offensive line, I mean, they right now, in my opinion, they're, they're controlling the game. We've been a fast third quarter. We've had three touchdowns. No punts. Yeah. See, that's what happens when you control the line of scrimmage. You control the clock, and you run the ball like that. The clock just keeps tick, 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 ticking. And Toledo's going to take a timeout. The play clock was down to seven seconds. 
First charge time off. Matt Campbell called that timeout, the head coach. And it'll be a 30 second timeout. Now I'll try to get this right about Toledo's opportunity to win the West. They have to win tonight. Then they have to beat uh, Akron. They need Northern Illinois to win next week. They need Ball State to beat Miami and they work out a three-way tie and Toledo wins on crossover scheduling strength. Let's go to the studio while I shake the cobwebs out of my head. Chris Cotter, Chris. <laughs> All right, this might do it for you here, Dave. How about a big deal in Major League Baseball? A trade involving three of the last four AL pennant winners. The Tigers sent Prince Fielder to the Rangers for second baseman Ian Kinzel. The story was first reported by CBSSports.com. Physicals are, of course, needed to uh, consummate the deal, but it looks like it is going to happen. Back to you, Dave. And also, Pacers and Knicks. At Madison Square Garden, Paul George with the fadeaway here. He finished with 35. Indiana now an NBA best, 10 and well, one. That days. was a dangerous throw on the 12th play of the drive into a lot of traffic, trying to fit it to Alonzo Russell on the tunnel screen. Paris Logan broke it up. Third and nine next. Very dangerous throw. I tell you what, Logan's fired up. <laughs> he is fired up over that play. Took him a while to get fired up, but so is he. Over six minutes used on this drive. Play clock down to five. Another timeout. Wow. Boy, you think about needing those timeouts at the end of a close game. Yes. And they've had to use two in the last couple of minutes of this third quarter. So let's revisit what's at stake here. I gave you the scenarios for Toledo to win. It's very okay. easy for Northern Illinois. <laughs> yes, if they is. leave with a win tonight, they go back to DeKalb as the Western champions with a game to be played against the boat rowers of Western Michigan. If Toledo wins, we go through that whole scenario that I ran through before. All these teams, the top three teams are bowl eligible, of course. And by the way, you're going to get a nice team any of those three from the West to come to your bowl game, you're going to be pretty happy. A lot of stake tonight, Dave. A lot of stake in this game. Well, you look at Northern Illinois outside the MAC. Right. Will they be back in that BCS again to drive your colleague Kirk Herb Street up a wall, <laughs> as it did last year? Big financial ramifications for this game if uh, NIU pulls off the, the victory tonight. Owens under a lot of pressure just lobs it up and barely anybody in mind the NIU folks are looking for an intentional grounding penalty it was Joe Windsor providing all the pressure Bernard Reedy was in mommy anyway he was close enough I think there's no need for a flag yeah no need for a flag now fourth and nine this is a tough call here and it looks like that Owens is going to stay out there no they're gonna, no, they're gonna bring, bring out, out the field goal unit well yeah. they've got a great kicker and uh, Jeremiah Detmer, no, nope, they're going to punt. Instead of trying the 52-yard field goal, maybe giving a field position if it doesn't work, right. we're going to get Vince Penz out here. Of course, we may even get a fake for all we know. Nope, Penz is just going to try to take as much out of the ball as he can. Oh, did he do his job? It is impossible, impossible to kick that any better. You're 100% right. And that's why you pooch punt down here. You, you, it's just a game of field position. Keyshawn Wilcher grabbed it, but what a job by Vince Penza. Jordan Lynch with two rushing touchdowns in the third quarter. Bernard Reedy is countered. We have one quarter to go to see if Northern Illinois can remain unbeaten, or will Toledo score the victory? Friday on ABC or ESPN2. College football lives here. One quarter to go with so much at stake for Northern Illinois and for Toledo with all sorts of conference and beyond implications. Jordan Lynch has two rushing touchdowns in this quarter. He's had some help from Jawan Breskison and Terrence Owens after a bad start has settled down into a very controlled game despite the fact that Toledo has controlled the game of their offensive line and their punter. Jordan Lynch has to literally go the length of the field for a touchdown here. Yeah, Dave, this is where champions are born and made right here, fourth quarter. 
Lynch taking a snap from the middle of that E in Toledo. Better get rid of it. He did. It was caught, but well out of bounds. It'll be second down and ten. The fourth quarter, everyone always says, well, the fourth quarter belongs to us. Well, the last two games, it has belonged to the Huskies. They've outscored their opponents 35 to nothing. And they were tight with Ball State last week. This is very similar in a lot of ways to the game that you called last week right. in DeKalb. And they exploded in the fourth quarter. We went to that game tied up in the fourth quarter, and then they just exploded. Jordan Lynch had a touchdown. Uh, they had a pick six by uh, Joe Windsor. And Lynch runs straight ahead for four. It'll be third down and six. Silvestri on the stop for Toledo. Again, if you're just tuning in, you're going, that's Toledo? Where's the rocket blue and gold? They're wearing these uniforms tonight for breast cancer awareness. And you see the pink ribbon on the helmet. And then they'll be auctioned off online. There'll be 100 of them available for fans after the game. Toledo's defense, they're running all around the field. Seems like they're having a problem lining up. Lynch in trouble. Sees the gap. Does he have the first down? Looks like he did. Yes, he did. Barely got it. But Jordan Lynch, Cameron Cole brought him down, but Lynch just got past the marker. You know, that's what Jordan Lynch is able to do. When things aren't right, he's not happy with what he's seeing downfield. He's able to tuck it and run for a first down right up the middle, too. I mean, this kid is not afraid of contact. He's always leaning forward. He's a guy who, when he's tackled, he's leaning forward. He's, he's not going to slide, that's no, for sure. He is not. That's the no. thing. The more you watch him, the more you notice he does not slide. He takes the contact. And he'll take a short gain on the long throw that time to Breskison. Gain of a two. It'll stop the clock. Out of bounds. So it'll be second out of eight coming up. Good catch by Breskison. Just reaching out there with his hands, plucking the ball, getting out of bounds. Nice safe passing game right now from Northern Illinois. But Stingley's coming back in the game, so they may go to a little, little power running attack at this point. Breskison, seven catches for 117. Lynch, well, he is patient and tricky. Ooh, and he's on his back, but he gets a yard shy of the first down. Third and one with Cole and Silvestri in there on the stop. This is the power running game I was talking about. They pulled the right guard, Aiden Collin. He led through the hole with Cameron Stingley. They make it, they're making sure that when Jordan Lynch hits that hole, he has a couple of blockers in front of him because right now Toledo's defense, they're playing a very physical brand of defense. Sebastiano in motion. And they give to him. And Sebastiano breaks free 30. Down to the 40-yard line. He's tripped up and lands hard at the 41-yard line. Norrell's on the tackle. First down for the Huskies. That's a, that's a play that they normally will run with Tommy Lee Lewis, who's out of the game. But watch this excellent block right there by Cameron Stingley. It's going to take that sort of effort to continue on the pace that they're on right now and walk away with a victory tonight. Eighth catch for Breskison. That's a four-yard pickup. It'll be second down and six. But don't forget, Northern Illinois began this at the 99 and three-quarter line after an amazing punt by the Rockets. Matt Campbell trying to figure out a way to stop a player that nobody in the Mac been able to stop. Jordan Lynch has never lost a Mac game as the starting quarterback for Northern Illinois. Hands off to Stingley. Stingley looking for the gap. He's got one. He'll be just short of the first down at midfield. Another tackle for Chase Murdoch. Stingley is such a low, such a big guy to try to bring down. That's six foot one, 244 pounds. And once he gets all of that weight going forward, it takes about two or three guys to try to slow him down and tackle him. We've had four lead changes tonight. Northern Illinois has seen three field goals missed. Toledo has turned the ball over three times. Lynch looking for the first. Oh, he got it. To the 45-yard line. We've talked quite a bit about the offensive line for Toledo, but Jared Volk, the left guard that time for the Huskies with a key block. Huge block. Huge block. That's what when they're running Lynch now in between the tackles, they're, they're pulling an, an extra lineman for a power O type of running attack. So and it's been effective. It's been very effective. 
Stingley it almost seems like he's waiting for that hole to develop rather than run to a spot. Breaks a tackle and Stingley and lost the ball. There it is. Now the ball is out of bounds. The official is going to rule the ball is out of bounds. And man, is he going to get a lot of help from the coaching staff for Northern Illinois. And you see Rod Carey upset with Stingley. Here it is right here. You see Christian Smith right here trying to tackle the ball. The ball will go back to the spot of the fumble. Second down. Yeah, you can see the ball go out. Yeah, it definitely went out of bounds. Yep. And the spot of the fumble is the 40-yard line, so it's a five-yard pickup, second down and five. And Stingley is going to take a play or two off after that fumble. <laughs> Maybe he's tired. Maybe the coach didn't make that decision. Well, I think the coach made that decision. Yeah, I agree with I'm you. I'm just going to guess. Yeah, you know, I, I agree. strictly a guess. Lynch looking for that first down marker. He's got it, and down the sideline he goes. And again, what Desmond has talked about, a perfect example, he saw the contact coming, so he lowered his shoulder, too. Yeah, hey, big fella, take some of this. I did a couple of shrugs earlier today, so uh, <laughs> my, my shoulders are feeling really good right now. Watch, excellent block. Let's get down to the field and quit. Dave, I'm standing right at the 23-yard line where that contact was initiated and made, and I can't tell you, I don't know another quarterback across the country who's not just stepping that one out of bounds. He, he eyed the defender, put his head down, and initiated contact. And he's going to come right at you again, Quinn, inside the 10, Lynch, inside the five. He's just short of the first down. Number six, Jordan Lynch on the carry. Brought down by Norris. I don't know how Lynch keeps going. Tackle and he can't come out of the game now. Look at him. He's dragging a little bit, too. He's feeling it. But what an excellent run by Lynch. I mean, this is why he's in those Heisman conversations. See, maybe he gets the trip to New York. Maybe that's all he's going to get out of it, although that's a heck of an honor in itself. But this is the kind of performance. 341 total yards from Jordan Lynch. 140 yards on the ground. And he's not done yet. And two touchdowns, too, on the ground. He's had two rushing touchdowns in this corner. Northern Illinois is going to call timeout. Rod Carey. His time in the 40 may not be fast, but he stepped it up a notch to get that timeout in. So at 10.26 to go, Jordan Lynch gets a chance to breathe. And we'll see if he will carry for a third touchdown in this second half when we return. The light bulb's in your... With the Big 12 title up for grabs, it is win and control your destiny Saturday night on ABC. The undefeated Bears of Baylor, led by quarterback Bryce Petty, in position to move up the BCS standings and remain in the national title picture, but Clint Shelf and the number 10 Cowboys aim to add their name to the BCS convo. Saturday night football presented by Windows, Baylor, Oklahoma State, Saturday at 8 Eastern on ABC. Northern Illinois 21, Toledo 17 in the fourth quarter as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the conference championships. Northern Illinois, if they win, they're in Detroit in a couple of weeks to play for the MAC championship as the Western Division champions. Toledo last won the West in 2005. They have a chance to win the West if they win this game tonight. Yeah, there has to be a false start penalty here. Yeah, yeah. Had a mistake. Yeah, it looks like Sterling. Ball start, offense, number 47, five-yard penalty, first down. It didn't help that he rose up, raised right. up, and went, oh. oh. I messed up. You know, you can't have two guys in motion. That's for sure. Right there. He starts the lane. He looks out. He's, like, Man, he's still moving in motion. Man, I can't move, too. Ah, gee whiz. Took him a while to throw the flag, though. Well, uh, he's going to move to the bench and get an earful from Rod Carey. Think he was tired, too? On uh, coach's decision? <laughs> yes. It's first and goal now. Instead of the two, first and goal from the seven. Now, let's see if that makes a difference. Lynch on the run. Underneath. Ooh, good hit. Picked up a couple of yards, did Spencer, but he took a shot by Cameron Cole the first time around. So it's going to be second down and goal. Ray Bush finally put him out of bounds from the five. Good job of James Spence taking that first hit, holding on to the ball, and then getting a couple extra yards, too. That's why he went out of bounds, so good job by Spencer. You see what Lynch has done. This drive began with Lynch standing in the end zone on the E in Toledo taking the snap. They were so far back. They run the jet sweep to the end zone. No, denied at the one-yard line. 
Junior Silvestri, two South Floridians colliding. Sebastiano from Coconut Creek, Silvestri from Hollywood, and the linebacker won that one. You're talking about how to tackle a guy and stop him in his tracks right there. I thought, well, I can't believe you kept him out of the end zone. Watch this. And threw him back. Excellent tackle. Excellent tackle by Silvestri. Well, Sebastiano uh, unable to get up for the moment. Yeah, that, that was textbook. I mean, you mean stopping the guy and then throwing him back to make sure he didn't break the plane with the ball? We're sitting kind of high up, and from here, I thought Sebastiano was going to get in. And Silvestri too. slammed the door shut. As Northern Illinois has literally gone from end to end, but will they go from end zone to end zone? What's in your ear? Ooh! This is starting at $7.99 at fathead.com. Fathead for real. Happy to say that Angelo Sebastiano was able to get off the field mostly under his own power, but here's the real time hit he just took. And listen to it, just listen. What a play by Junior Silvestri. And we certainly hope that Angelo is going to be okay. Quint, you got something? Well, Sebastiano was a big part of the, the Northern Illinois offense early in the season he, uh, against Iowa in the win, injured against Eastern Illinois, and that kind of derailed the season now. But with the other injuries, he was back in the lineup today. Hey, think about it. They're down three receivers now. James Spencer in the backfield on third and goal from the one. Spencer clears out. Will this be Lynch again? You, you know it is. You know and he's it. in again. Exactly. Like I said, this is a championship quarter right now. And when the, the game is on the line, you put the ball in the hands of your best player. And where did this, this drive start from again? What, what the, like, the one-inch like, yard line, something close to that? It started from about where we were earlier this afternoon, in that building, yeah, exactly. in the north end zone. And practically, yeah. literally, this was an end-to-end -end drive. Their drives in this half have gone 85, 65, and 99. He started this drive standing in one end zone and ended it in the other end zone. Yep. What a drive for him. Both times he was on the E when it was over with. Maybe the K and Rockets there, but an amazing drive by Northern Illinois. Yes. And that was engineered by Jordan Lynch. 111 yards rushing and three touchdowns in this half. Jordan Lynch strike a pose in the end zone. Get new game content first on Xbox. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Call of Duty Ghosts. Available now. Rated mature. Great night here at the Glass Bowl. Toledo Faithful now being challenged to try to root their team on as they can't do anything about Jordan Lynch. In this second half, he has just been utterly magnificent, almost putting this entire Northern Illinois offense on his back. And Northern Illinois trying to win a, another MAC game in a row. It'd be their 24th. And trying to make it 15 straight wins on the road. Now, can their defense hold up? Or will it be rocket time on offense here for Toledo? Short kick for Reedy with 10. And then he's going to get 10 yards, and that is it. Good coverage that time by the Huskies. Let's take another look at the BCS standings brought to us by Discover. And there you see Northern Illinois and, the, and Desert in a little bit of a conundrum because they yeah. need some help to maybe be a BCS buster. Yeah, they, they have to get a, uh, ahead of Fresno State. And I don't know if that's going to happen. I mean, Fresno State's been playing great football. They'd probably be favored in their next two games, too. It's going to take a it's going to take a little something for Northern Illinois to get ahead of Fresno State to make this happen. And the other trick is that they must be if you're going to be a BCS buster, you've got to be ranked above a conference champion. Well, at the moment, that's happening because Central Florida is 18th. Should Central Florida go on to win the American, but remain below either Fresno or Northern Illinois, then there's a chance Owens throws that one away. It'll be second down and ten. He literally just about threw that in the stand. So here's the rules to our game. Now, this will be the last year we'll ever talk about this, by the way. It's going to be interesting, too. Go ahead. All right, here we go. Champions <laughs> of the Conference USA, the MAC, the Mountain West, or the Sun Belt will earn that automatic berth. If either they're ranked in the top 12 of the final of BCS or their top 16 and ranked higher than an automatic qualifying conference champion, that's where we're headed. 
with Fresno and Northern Illinois if they remain ahead of UCF and be honest their points lead over UCF is fairly substantial. You'll see UCF uh, tomorrow night on our family of networks against Rutgers. Second and ten for Terrence Owens. Hit as he throws that pass underthrown. Well, it looked like it was going to be under throw when the receivers came back, but it actually sailed over their heads. Owens took a hard hit, but he's okay. It'll be third down and ten coming up. And this is really out of the Rockets. This is out of their character. You don't want to drop Terrence Owens back and have to play that sort of ball game. You still want them to stay with their offense. I mean, there's nine minutes left in this game. They're only down two scores. But now this drop back passing game that they've come out with during this drive is really out of character for the Rockets. And they go empty here. Lynch is in some trouble. Excuse me. Owens is in some trouble. And he throws it away. That's going to be a three and out. Yeah. Great pressure that time by George Rainey. You see Perez Ford. And I, I, I you know, Des, I have to agree with you. You're running the ball fairly well. You've got two good backs and Flew Ellen is back tonight and Kareem Hunt. And a lot of time. Yeah, I'm really surprised that Jason Candle came out with that game plan for that drive right there. A lot of time on the clock. That's not who they are as a team, especially as an offense. I think it's the first part we've had this half. And going to get a good roll inside the 25, and it's going to die at about the 24 yard line with nine minutes and five seconds remaining on the game clock. Well, the second half drive chart for Northern Illinois, they haven't been stopped. And that's because no one is able to stop Jordan Lynch. This is the real killer. After what we thought was maybe the best punt anybody's had all year. Yeah. <laughs> to the corner of the end zone almost. And then Northern Illinois does that. And Lynch did most of the heavy lifting. 15 play, 99 yard drive. That was a backbreaker. That one really hurt. And then to come out here on offense and the Rockets go three and out and give the ball back to Northern Illinois and Jordan Lynch puts a lot of pressure on their defense. That was the first three and out of this night. Their handoff going to be to Stingley. And he's just going to try to move bodies, and he's pretty good at that. He gets to the 27-yard line. That'll be a gain of four. Second down and six coming up. And that's Stingley's game. He wants to run in between the tackles, downhill, carry a couple of guys two or three yards, keep the chains moving, keep the clock moving. Yeah, he's out wide at the bottom of the screen right now. Lynch sees an opening. Off he goes. First down, Jordan Lynch and Northern Illinois. Let's go down to the field and Quint Kesnick. Dave, this drive's going to be uh, Cam Stingley time. Big running back, 244 pounds, averages 56 carries in the first half. That number balloons to 92 rushes in the second half, recruited as a linebacker. Um, and he's kind of flip-flopped from defense to offense and been a real revelation for Northern Illinois this, year, this season uh, in, in these ground-and-pound situations. We've got uh, J. Ron Elliott, the outstanding senior, tied... that huge trade if you haven't heard about it it involves Prince Fielder that's all I'm going to say RG3 fighting back at his critics and uh, you've heard of those last two guys they're going to go at it again Brady and Manning so Sports Center coming up next perhaps you'll see our nomination for the hashtag SC top 10 the Jimmy Ward interception in the first quarter straight ahead Stingley he's got a little burst to it Stingley running free gets into Toledo territory at the 45-yard line before Alan Covington 
brought him down. And this is starting to look a little bit like the second half of both these teams' games a week ago. You're 100% right. This is what Northern Illinois loved to do. At this point, give the ball to Stingley and just let him go north and south. Let guys just bounce off of him or let him carry guys for a couple extra yards. I mean, his yards after contact are incredible. It's just sick, really, what he's able to do with the ball once he gets hit by a defender and he keeps going north and south. Well, he's got to be over 600 yards after contact this year. He came in with 588 out of his 812. He takes a break. The other thing is the sideline for Northern Illinois, you watch across the way, they're so jazzed up now as they feel like they're closing in on a win. They'll be short of the first down following the carry. It'll be third down in a couple after that last run by Stingley and then everybody jumping up and down. Rod Carey, being a coach, he is not going to jump up and down until it's zero on the clock. And also, you're starting to see the Huskies begin to steal seconds away from the Rockets. Lynch. First down to the 32-yard line. So... Northern Illinois is playing for a lot in this game. One of six undefeated. They're seven minutes away from hanging on to that. What will happen to the next BCS? They're going to pick up a win here if they can hang on. Will they make it 15 straight on the road? Will they make it 24 straight in conference play? And a win here wraps up the Western Division title and puts them in Ford Field for the MAC Championship game on a Friday night in a couple of weeks against either Buffalo or Bowling Green, who play on the 29th in Ralph Wilson Stadium in Buffalo to decide the East. Stingley bouncing off his own man this time. He's free. Stingley trying to get to the end zone. He won't make it on a fine open field tackle by Cameron Cole inside the 10-yard line, though. That's surprising to see Stingley go through the hole there and bounce it to the outside like that. That's something we normally don't see him using, putting on a little Barry Sanders move, get to the outside. Tough run, but very effective run by Stingley. You may be the only person ever to compare Cameron Stingley and Barry Sanders. No, I'm not comparing. I'm just saying he, he tried to go outside like Barry Sanders. No, there's nothing about that kid that reminds me of Barry Sanders. More like Earl Campbell. <laughs> that's, yeah, that, that is more like it. Yes, sir. I think Campbell was a little faster. I was about to say, Campbell, he could roll. Yes, he could. Earl could. Oh, my God. Earl yeah. has some juice. Second down and goal. Will it be Lynch again? Will it be Lynch for a fourth rushing touchdown in this half? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I'm, I'm thinking yes. You know, if you ask me, I'm saying yes. I would be surprised if Lynch doesn't carry the ball. He doesn't. Uh oh, he gave it to Spencer. Yes, sir. There we go. James Spencer Another gets his touchdown second touchdown Spencer. of the night. That's right. He had the first one. He did. On a third and eight pitch out that he ran in 18 yards. Yeah. And Northern Illinois has seized this game. I guess Bob Cole, the OC, said, you know, everyone's expecting Jordan to run the ball. Let me give it to Spencer. Switch it, switch it up a little bit. Well, you know, we have talked quite a bit about, and deservedly, the Toledo offensive line. But in the second half, yeah. this Northern Illinois offensive line has taken over, and really, they began to punish Toledo. And I think they may have worn them down. Well, they're, yeah, they did. They took over. And they asserted their dominance over Toledo's defensive front. And nobody could be happier than Matthew Sims, the Northern Illinois kicker, who missed three field goal attempts in the first half when Northern Illinois was trailing in this game. He's off the hook, most yeah. likely. <laughs> yes, he is. Jordan Lynch, he's happy whether he gets in the end zone or whether it was teammates because Northern Illinois is closer to remaining undefeated. And Oregon, Arizona at 3.30 Eastern, Saturday on ABC or ESPN2. College football lives here. Well, tomorrow night on ESPN, Blake Bortles and the number 18 ranked Knights of UCF need to keep winning to stay atop the American and remain in the BCS picture. They face Gary Nova and a Scarlet Knights team, a win away from bowl eligibility. College football primetime served by Applebee's, Rutgers versus Central Florida Thursday at 7.30 on ESPN and live on Watch ESPN. Great story in Orlando, Central Florida there. The load carriers for the Huskies, Cameron Stingley, 42. James Spencer, a couple touchdowns tonight, 34. 
Big Rob Sterling done the blocking and Jordan Lynch has more rushing yards yeah. in this half than Toledo has total yards. Wow. He has 125. They have 121. Wow. That tells you that tells you the story right there. I mean, he came out the second half and decided to put the game on his shoulders, especially missing his top two receivers. Then the third one was knocked out in the second half also. That's an impressive stat. That does man. make it impressive because impressive. Tommy Lee Lewis is such a great player for Northern because he's so quick and so dangerous and so important. And Lynch had to do more work than normal. Reedy trying to break loose. They have covered kicks, the Huskies, so well tonight. Reedy is an outstanding kick returner, too, but he just hasn't been able to get loose. He couldn't even make it to the 20-yard line. All right, Northern Illinois did it last year, and they were tight with FSU until the fourth quarter of the Discover Orange Bowl. Back it up to 2010, TCU, two years in a row. Utah, Hawaii, Boise, and Utah. Some of those, uh, Desmond, have worked out very well. Others, not yeah, so no, much. Yeah, no. yeah. You're right about that. Um Orange Bowl against Northern Illinois and Florida State. People forget that game was actually kind of tight going yeah. to the fourth quarter. So then it got away from the Huskies. Well, Florida State will be in a BCS Bowl game, I suspect, this year. Maybe the big one. Owens pump fake. He'll take off instead. He'll get about a yard, maybe, maybe even two before he is brought down. Ken Bishop, 93, mentioned his name quite a bit tonight. Plugging up the middle of the nose tackle, Jordan Lynch. One game left at home next week on Tuesday night. You'll see it on the Family of Networks against Western Michigan. Chance to finish the regular season undefeated. Owens over the top. A lot of contact down there. No flags. And by the way, we've had hardly any penalties tonight. You're right. That, there was a lot of contact on that one right there. Yeah, a little bit. Justin Olak yeah. was the intended receiver. But I'm just, you know, I think fans enjoy a game without penalties. And I'm sure the officials enjoy a clean game without penalties. Right. We well, have two very disciplined ball clubs who are very sound too that's that's what you get you don't have a, a game that's littered with um, a bunch of yellow laundry on the on the field so we've only had three tonight total that's it that's great good. yeah i love it keeps the game moving across the middle incomplete Trying to get it into Alonzo Russell. And it's fourth down and nine again. And will Toledo just take a last desperate stand or will they punt? No, they'll send out the punt team. Great defense right there. And this is just so not Toledo's offense. This drop back passing it. You know, if you're Jay, Jay Neiman, the defensive coordinator for the Huskies, you, you have to be pleased when you see them going drop back pass, drop back pass. It plays right to the hands of the Huskies defense. Very high punt, but short. Matt Williams will make the fair catch at the 44-yard line. Just a 37-yard punt. So both the Huskies mascots, what a beautiful animal there. Also good at giving out high fives after touchdowns. Yeah, you're right about that. All right, we yeah. wondered, what would Jordan Lynch do today? Would he be able to carry this team down two starting receivers? Your answer is yes. No problem. Just put the ball in the hands of number six. He'll make it happen. You know, and, and the thing about it, Dave, is the, the defense they know is coming. You know, everyone, everyone in the stadium, they know six is going to carry the ball. You, you may not know which direction, but you know he's going to carry it. Mm -hmm. And they still couldn't stop him. They couldn't do anything about it. Lynch will stay in, but he's probably going to hand off a lot to Stingley. And Stingley's just finding holes now. His line is just making life a lot easier for him. That's going to be a pickup of a dozen and a first down. While I have a second, I want to make sure we thank uh, both the folks in Northern Illinois and Toledo for all their help, all their hospitality. We certainly love being on the MAC tour and love MACTION. And it's always a thrill to do these games in midweeks in November. And uh, just thanks to everybody for all the help we've had. One more to go next week. Uh, in DeKalb, a chance for Northern Illinois to finish their regular season undefeated. You're right. Enjoy the match in the past couple of weeks. Next week, can't wait to watch these teams play again. And they've been so great here in Toledo. People of Northern Illinois, they helped us tremendously too for this game, prepare for this game. And I'm just hoping I can get another bow of that white 
Chicken. <laughs> you want to go grab you like chicken chili after this is over? We'll send the runner out to take care of that. You know, I never had white bean uh, chicken chili until uh, you know, a couple couple years ago. I went to Madison and uh, Andy North, who does yeah. uh, golf for ESPN. Oh, sure. His wife made. They had us over their house to to eat, and his wife made some, and it was, hers was outstanding. <laughs> and I was hooked ever since. And uh, she even gave me the recipe. Oh, now, do you cook it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you? Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Nice. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, do not doubt my culinary skills, no, my I will friend. Not. No, Iron Chef does. No, absolutely <laughs> yes, not. Well, I think this Jordan Lynch going to take off here. He's going to play this right to the last whistle. Well, I thought, you know, I think it was... Tom Atukowicz, the defensive coordinator for Toledo, said yesterday, this is a league for players who love football. Oh, yes, yeah, exactly. You know, you don't yeah. get, you know, you, if you look at the recruiting when that comes out in February and we do the 24 hours of recruiting and, you know, Alabama's going to get this and Florida State and so Notre Dame and so forth, you're not going to see Max Schools in the top 25, right. the top 50. Yep. But you get excellent football players here right. and there's a, I don't want to say purity as if the others are impure. I'm not trying to imply that, but no. this is a, a pure football league. Yeah, he made a point that, you know, you get the guys, you, you know, you, you, you get questions like, well, how did a guy like Jordan Lynch, how did he get missed by like an Illinois a kid from Chicago? And he made the point that, you know, these are kids who they don't come out with the four or five stars um, from these um, recruiting services. But what they do is they're the kids who you look at and you can see the potential and you know you can develop them into something special. And that's what they do. And he also said these kids, they're going to play like this, like a Jordan Lynch. He's going to play like this if you see the stadium looking like it's looking right now. Yeah. He's not going to play like this just because ESPN said they're going to play like this week in and week out because of their love for the sport. And they play with a chip on their shoulder, too. So on fourth down, Jordan Lynch going to hand it off to Stingley and he's going to bounce and bounce and get tossed. So something for Toledo to feel good about. Junior Silvestri came in and flipped down Stingley so Toledo will take the ball over on downs. And that helmet Silvestri's is helmet. Wow. Wow is right. We used to call those war marks. Those are war marks, man. Look at that. Look at his face mask. It's it's a mixture of colors on his face mask. It's, I know. Like, it's just not the the pristine white that it was before the game. He's done everything he could to try to help his team win. It doesn't, it's not going to happen here, barring a miracle. But I'll go back to what I said before. Toledo's going to wind up in a postseason game, and you're going to get a good football team in that bowl game. And they'll be well prepared. Flewellen on the ground. So Northern Illinois is a minute and 41 seconds away from another Mac West championship. They continue, and I almost hate to do this to our Toledo friends, uh, the torture yeah. Toledo in these yeah. November games. Right. Four in a row. Toledo may own the all-time series record, but the and Owens takes a slide there. But it's Northern that's really hurt in the last four years. There you see, that's the very latest, including tonight. It's all over. Northern Illinois has wrapped it up. They will play the Fighting Boat Rowers of Western Game Michigan on Tuesday night in DeKalb as Western will try to score an upset that will maybe help launch their program for next season. Owens over the middle, caught. And that will be a first down. Flewellen making the catch. Toledo's also going to play this right to the final whistle. Toledo, both these schools in pretty good shape too. Matt Campbell, very energetic coach been a winner at Mount Union and now a winner at Toledo. And that's going to be a pass all the way down to Alex Zamolik, the sophomore from Fort Huron, Michigan. And Detroit is where the MAC championship is. Beautiful Ford Field, also the site of the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl, where the MAC champion is slated to go. Bowling when we get to that time of the year. You're right, Dave. I think the uh, the Rockets program is in good hands with with Matt Campbell, and his staff. He has an excellent staff, and you know they're, they're building a, a really strong program. This is just one game where they were really outmatched by Jordan Lynch in Northern Illinois. Well, you said it earlier. That pass to the end zone is intercepted. 
Paris Logan and a fourth Toledo turnover. That's how the night began for them yes, with a sir. fumble on their first play. And that's how the night is going to end for them with them turning the football over. Touchback first and 10 Northern Illinois. And Logan just dashing in front of the receiver, and that's the punctuation as Northern Illinois and the Huskies will take a knee. In the meantime, is Northern Illinois a name we're going to have to start getting used to saying as a 9-10, maybe 11-win team year in, year out? Now, it's going to be interesting to see what happens when Lynch leaves. That's true. You talk yeah. about a team that's going to be missing their star player. Oh, that's cold. They just gave Rod Carey a Gatorade bath. Oh, uh, he'll take it. No. What's, what's the temperature down there again? Like below 30? <laughs> it, it feels that way to Rod Carey at the moment, yes. yes. But yes. Jordan Lynch has wrapped up a MAC West championship, a 24th straight conference victory, a 14th straight road win, a 15th straight road win for this team. Yep. And they're on their way to.